Here in Sports Extra, we are switching to Premier League because here at the Emirates Stadium, it's about to begin. Arsenal against Brentford, another key date, another key weekend in this fascinating Premier League title race with just two points separating the top three teams. Liverpool and Manchester City play each other tomorrow. Both cannot win that one. Mikel Arteta knows that at least one, if not both, of his title rivals are going to drop points this weekend and that makes it feel all the more imperative that Arsenal get the job done here but against the Brentford team who took points off them in this fixture last season a game that finished 1-1 here at the Emirates the teams are in the tunnel Arsenal who've won all seven Premier League matches so far in 2024 and they've won them so dominantly by an aggregate scoreline of 31 goals to three it has been Arsenal's longest league winning streak from the beginning of a calendar year ever and it's the longest Premier League winning streak by any club this season here come the teams Mikel Odegaard Martin Odegaard leading out his uh, team with behind him the figure of Aaron Ramsdale who gets to play in this game because of course David Raya is ineligible against his parent club it's an interesting twist Ramsdale first choice for the previous two seasons but he has only taken part in a handful of games since the arrival of Raya and one way or the other he will be a little bit rusty against a Brentford team who've got Ivan Tony and Johan Wissa in their attack it's Arsenal against Brentford coming up live here on Sports Extra and it's great to have Michael Brown alongside me for the commentary Arsenal have got to keep their eyes on the prize here they've got to, you can hear the, the atmosphere, the flags waving behind the goal, the scene is set for Arsenal to go top of the league in March would be an incredible turnaround, Mikel Arteta has been desperate to change things here the squad looks better, they have more depth Obviously, after last season, it was incredible performances what they did, but they just ran out towards the end of the season. And now, with that game tomorrow, Liverpool versus Manchester City, they could be top, which tells you everything, doesn't it? Impressive performances, set pieces have been excellent, scoring you know, so many goals. That number nine's been questioned as well. Do they even need one? Because they've got a real fluidity about the way they play. I expect them to control this, although Brentford will be stubborn. This is the third time these sides have met this season. Arsenal have already beat Brentford by a goal to nil in both games of the GTEC Community Stadium. One of those in the League Cup, one in the Premier League. On Monday, Arsenal went 5-0 up after just 39 minutes at Bramall Lane. First time in Premier League history that a team have been that far ahead so early in a match. Today, back on home soil in front of a full house at the Emirates. This 5.30 kickoff on BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. Let's give you a full rundown of the teams there. Arsenal have got Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Back four, Ben White, William Saliba, Gabriel and Jakob Kivior. The midfield three are Martin Odegaard, Jorginho and Declan Rice. And then the front three is Bukayo Saka, Kai Havertz and Leandro Trossard. There's no Martinelli today, not even on the bench. He cut his foot against Sheffield United in the most recent game. The Brentford team has Mark Flecken in goal, three central defenders, Matthias Jorgensen, Christopher Ayer, and Nathan Collins, who's making the 100th appearance of his league career. The wing-backs are Mads Rorslevin, Keen Lewis Potter, who comes in on the left-hand side in place of Sergio Reguilón. Christian Norgard sits at the base of the midfield. Frank Onyeka and Vitani Yemelt ahead of him. And then the front two we mentioned, Ivan Tony and Johan Wisser. But what an atmosphere this is inside the Emirates. Arsenal fans raising their red and white scarves above their heads and hoping, praying that they are on the cusp of something special in these closing weeks now of a very dramatic Premier League campaign. After today, there were just 10 league games to go. It is 20 years since the Arsenal Invincibles, since the last time this club won the Premier League title. Brentford are going to get us started wearing their chain strip turquoise and navy 
Arsenal the traditional red and white Brentford playing from right to left as we look down Matthias Jorgensen plays it forward Gabriel looks to control on his chest Wissa is putting pressure on him and Kivio's clearance wasn't great but picked up by Leandro Trossard the Belgian inside his own final third turns rolls it back to Gabriel we know that Arsenal like to play it out from the back they like to almost set booby traps for their opponents to suck them in and to press high that Arsenal can then pounce and it'll be intriguing Michael to see how Aaron Ramsdale copes particularly with that today yeah and you, you would be thinking wouldn't you set pieces Brentford are good at those they will be trying to target trying to add a little bit of pressure on him but the young man's got broad shoulders and trying to be impress as much as possible Connor and I think he'll have the confidence in his ability to step forward yes he's not played but psychologically I think he'll be okay but Arsenal are going to dominate they're going to move the ball around and can they get that early goal that's what they'll be looking for Brentford is going to sit we've got to try and get on the ball wherever possible try and soak it up slightly Mark Flecken the Brentford goalkeeper wearing all purple away to our right hand side of the clock end here Rolls the ball short to Nathan Collins. He's right for the clearance trick to Saka. That was a very poor clearance. Collins tried to make amends, commits a foul on Odegaard. Play on, says the referee. Saka crosses, picks up Trossard. And Roar Sleverson had to put it out for a corner just as Trossard was about to shoot. The mistake by Collins there almost proved to be so costly. Yeah, he wasn't comfortable. He tries to play it into midfield. It's on Yucca, but it's got to be better than that. He comes with a big challenge. Odegaard right through the back of him. Referee clearly plays the advantage Saka does really well drives the ball forward also have great covering but these are these set pieces again the setup's unusual Connor bright start for Arsenal at home in the Premier League nil-nil with Brent for the visitors Declan Rice prepares to take the corner far side of the pitch from us left hand side as Arsenal come forward there's all sorts of jostling for position inside the six yard box it's an in swinger and I think it's cleared off the line there was a touch on the goal line by Ivan Tony. Arsenal is screaming for a corner for that. The referee, who's Robert Jones, says no. He didn't see the touch. That's a goal kick. Well, we're having another look at it now. He does so well. Ivan Tony just drops back in because the ball's a vicious delivery. Does he touch it? Oh, he clearly does. It's going in in that far corner. Ivan Tony again played as if he didn't touch it. Just jogged on. We know he's got a little bit of mischievous about him. Referee bought it. Now, well, with these sides true here, 1 1 last season, the PGMOL later admitted that Ivan Tony's goal should have been disallowed. Here, he's made a clearance that, okay, you know, it's not a deciding a goal controversy here, but Arsenal should have had a corner there. Uh, Tony, who likes to, as, uh, as Axel Foley would say, fracture an occasional law, was that the G Tech would he, would he you know, place the ball to a slightly different position to score that? Uh, we were on commentary as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. and it was there waiting. The banners were all out. There was a full parade <laughs> about <laughs> Ivan Tony's back, and he, he just snuck one in, didn't he? But there again, he didn't react. Good to Troy Wisher here. Edge of the D, tried to swing his boot at it, couldn't get a clean connection. And Arsenal will come away from deep with the Trossard starting on the edge of his own penalty area, but quickly accelerating up towards the halfway line, and then he gets the legs hacked out from underneath him by Frank Onyeka. And that was uh, a rather cynical challenge and the referee is going to show a yellow card for it very little attempt to play anything like the ball here he knows it's a counter attack he knows he's got to stop Trossard and he chops him down see I'm going to look I want to see, see it again is there any ball I don't think there is as he moves it away Trossard very very well referee give himself some time he waited he thought about the situation and he come to the right decision it was a lunge he got the man not the ball but the counter-attack from Arsenal's quick, progressive, wants to get into good positions. I think that's so important that you don't want Brentford just to get set, want to delay, they want to wait. Full credit to him, started well the game. It is Arsenal nil, Brentford nil, five minutes played in North London. Gabriel to take the free kick for the home side on the halfway line. Commentary for the Six Nations continues over on Five Live. Gabriel waits. Eventually takes the free kick short to Trossard, who's showing no ill effects from that challenge from Onyeka. Trossard gives it back to Gabriel inside Arsenal territory. Now Jorginho, who's really risen to prominence in recent weeks. He was somewhat of a peripheral figure 
the opening months of being an Arsenal player but he has become a crucial part of Mikel Arteta's engine in the middle of the midfield lately so nil nil ball with Flecken the Brentford goalkeeper away to our right hand side David Raya is here he's ineligible to play but he's down sitting around the technical area the Arsenal reserve keeper should anything happen to Ramsdale is Carl Hine who has not made any appearances this season in any competition header on the edge of the penalty area an important, important one for Norgard for Brentford but Odegaard can pick it up two Norwegian colleagues dangling there this is a chance to turn for Bukayo Saka just outside the penalty area that Arsenal attack but he's surrounded by opponents he can't get it in Tony gets a touch Norgard tries to find Wissa Brentford give it up cheaply here come Arsenal again right hand side of the midfield Martin Odegaard number eight on his back drags it back under his studs flicks it out towards the right hand touch line where Ben White is re ready infield then from Jorginho one touch from Havertz Saka's real confidence this is about Arsenal they're playing with a swagger Trossard sells a dummy on the edge of the area quick little one-two with Declan Rice great ball ahead of Saka to the byline cuts it back and Nathan Collins under pressure clears away Arsenal are asking big questions here ah, great football everybody wanting the ball great little moves sets triangles round the corners Trossard, brilliant ball, just didn't come off, but you can hear now that support, it's rising, but it's all Arsenal. Remember, Arsenal go top if they win this, six and a half minutes played, Saliba, who's up midway inside the Brentford half, very congested around the opponent's final third here, as Brentford are forced to bring everyone back, and Arsenal are very much pushing everyone forward, Saka up against the chalk of the touchline on the right-hand side, on the Eka ahead of him. Saka retreats back to Saliba infield to Jorginho and further on to Gabriel on the left hand side oh, still playing left to right as we look down here's a chance for Kivior to come forward Jakob Kivior who's now started a left back in six games in all competitions in a row Declan Rice has it Rice one of the goal scorers on Monday at Bramall Lane and now Odegaard 10 yards outside the penalty area on the right hand side always with a head up always looking for options gives it short to Ben White low ball into Kai Havertz Havertz has really been in the goals lately Jorginho tried to pick out Saka it's intercepted Saka raises the thumbs up anyway he liked the idea of that as Ramsdale gets a touch near the centre circle he'll be keen to show what he can do with his feet here and he's not found Ben White with that direct pass yeah he's trying to force it Nicola Teta just folds his arms is he going to comment to him oh, he's just tried to drill that out to the right hand side pulled it it's a little bit of nervous tension. I don't think it'll bother him too much. I don't think he needs to overcomplicate it, trying to do too much of that, Connor. But just going back there, Nyeke, when he goes to go tight, because he had that yellow card, he had to pull right out of the situation. That's the problem with him now. You want to set a tone as a midfield player. You want to get tight, want to be aggressive, but you can't now. Nil-nil. Spotlight on Aaron Ramsdale today. I remember being at West Ham recently when Calvin Phillips made his debut for David Moyes see that he made a howling error right at the beginning of the game and you know the spotlight's on you that's not what you want and it's only been a little error from Ramsdale but now everyone's keen to see what happens next time he gets the ball as down goes Keane Lewis Potter looking for a free kick and he gets one in the left back position for Brentford free kick to the visitors so it always amazes me there when you know somebody's going to try and buy, buy a foul he falls down and the flag just like waves aggressively why doesn't he just wait and go I might not have got this right and it's amazing Saka just goes really is it a foul he lose Potter falls over delays is it good play is it not do we want to see it he's got himself a breather Keen Lewis Potter playing on the left hand side of the Brentford defence and he's got to be busy keeping tabs on Bukayo Saka that is one of the more difficult assignments for any Premier League defender what a lovely touch that was not made by Trussard on the far side through the legs of Rorslip but he wasn't able to collect it around the other side down goes Wissa on the edge of the area and the referee's given a free kick for that too free kick to Brentford might be within shooting distance Wissa went down there didn't seem to be an awful lot in it Gabriel is complaining free kick to Brentford so he does really well with that. He gets his body in, and then Gabriel's comfortable. Oh, and he issues a yellow, yellow card. That's interesting. Gabriel. I wonder if that's for the protest afterwards as much as the challenge. Yeah, well, when we get another look at it, the assistant referee probably just said straight away, there is a shirt pull. He pulls him into an advanced area when you have a look at it again. No-brainer. Referee gets it correct. Gabriel, what's he doing? He just gets caught out. Once you pull the shirt, you're in trouble. These are the areas now. What do you do? Corner of that 
18 yard box do you put it in do you try and work it can you get a little bit of movement get a shot away it is such a wide angle well, goalkeeper needs testing yes there's been a real buzz of an atmosphere around the Emirates but suddenly a hush of quiet Arsenal fans want to survive you just this look at the line moment. there Connor everyone's up right on the penalty area Ivan Tony, right in front of the eye line of Ramsdale on the edge of the six do they drop off what do you do you just got to leave him be yeah. brave and there's all sorts of tactics with this uh, active inactive interpretations of offside law and strikers know they can unsettle defence for standing in ostensibly blatantly offside positions but it's only if they get a touch that they become active Ramsdale staying on his goal line and the Arsenal players are lined up level with the edge of the penalty spot this is out by the corner angle of the penalty area right hand side as Brentford come forward Keen Lewis Potter is over there so to Christian Norgaard and here it comes played in by Keen Lewis Potter across the face of goal and a roar of relief from Arsenal fans as it goes wide Arsenal nil Brentford nil yeah it's one of those isn't it delivery right across the face goes out the back tries to probably get too much pace on it there's a little problem with Ramsdale not sure what he's asking for behind the goal but he wants something sorting out but he'll be delighted to see that one flash past on it Tossard has possession left hand side for Arsenal nil nil of the Emirates plays it towards the penalty area looking for Kai Havertz cut out by Christopher Ayer Ayer who made his Brentford debut against Arsenal two seasons ago and free kick is given to Brentford once again and opening stages we've only played 12 minutes but so there's been a few stop starts which are disrupting Arsenal's flow and I think Thomas Frank will be quite pleased about that 100% you know that delay that wait it was just a little nudge wasn't it referee said straight away now Flecking comes forward well, we're going to go direct try and get some seconds Ivan Tony possibly this diagonal and can they get in behind King Lewis Potts will be looking to try and just sneak in behind it 10 games to go in the title race after this evening Saliba jumps and wins the header comes back down towards him awkward height flicks it with his knee and it comes for Lewis Potter on the left hand side good ball in that's a clever lead by Janelt because he knew Tony was behind him Tony in the penalty area Janelt crosses Wissa was ready to finish and Kivio got a really important touch flag goes up on the far side Wissa would have been offside but Kivio didn't know that and that was very good defending Brentford looked dangerous when they come forward yeah they did Keen Lewis Potter just put it into area just ran through there was that little sort of Overs wasn't there, Janel just leaves it, Ivan Tony tries to get a strike, tries to look for a bit of space, Janel backs it up, drifts it in, that cross to the back post, flag goes up, and that support again, the Arsenal fans just trying to give them as much help as possible, but Thomas Frank, just in that technical area, will be pleased that he's seen some progress from his team. Half time of the Six Nations, England 8, Ireland 12, and second half commentary of that game to come on five live we'll stick with the premier league football here on sports extra and once this finishes on sports extra we'll be with edin emma radicaru uh, commentary live from indian wales arsenal nil brentford nil busy weekend of sports all the details on the bbc sport website I saw the attack down the right-hand side already today. Manchester United have beaten Everton by two goals to nil at Old Trafford. 2-2 draw between Bournemouth and Sheffield United. 1-1 draw at Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace conceding a late equaliser as Luton came back to get a point there. Crossed by Odegaard. Hung in the air in front of Rorslev. And as he jumped, Trussard couldn't... I think he lost sight of the ball. It hits the Belgian and goes out for a goal kick to Brentford. Wolves beat Fulham by two goals to one. Michael yeah, Brown. Rorslev back post, tries to head it away, misses it just creeps out very unfortunate on that back post that Trussard couldn't keep it in but good work Odegaard finding space a little step over it's just that little delivery it wasn't clean on that right foot as he just puts it across the six yard area on that left foot you know he will cause a few issues but uh, the delay Brentford is waiting that's a good battle isn't it Tony and Gabriel we are in the 15th minute no goals so far Arsenal have scored more goals in the opening quarter hour of Premier League games this season than any other team and no side has conceded more in the opening 15 minutes than Brentford so Thomas Frank will be pleased that this is all square and even more pleased now as his team wins a corner yeah good forward play having Tony down that right hand side just getting his body in trying to wait trying to clip it across now everybody just looking what type of set piece will the delivery come in will Brentford go short 
everybody a big presence all around that six yard area and where are they on top of Ramsdale yes everybody they're, they're, they're six are. people right <laughs> around I mean that is six like, opponents right around yeah. him but he's owned the 12 of them in the in the six yard box now they're all sort of choreography here as they burst out of the six yard box ball comes in Tony's header's on target but straight to the goalkeeper that's Aaron Ramsdale's first save and look at this for a throw what a throw Trossard is onto it for Arsenal Roslev trying to get back brilliant defending Havertz comes to join the attack Trossard can't keep it moving well that was really exciting the throw from Ramsdale the sprint from Trossard but he didn't have the pace to burn Roslev and the Dane was able to get back. Yeah, interesting set piece. They were putting pressure on Ramsdale. It was a free header. There was no pace left on it. But when he takes the catch, he steps forward. Just brilliant assist, isn't it? I think he throws it further than I could kick it, Connor. Right over into the halfway line. And then the race was on. Great recovery runs from Brentford, though. They got back in. They delayed. They waited. And then they got the numbers in. That support was there. Russell had very, very quick. Well, that was almost kamikaze from Brentford, sending so many players forward to attack the corner. Ramsdale's quick thinking, and he, and he flung it, he gave it, it was a fantastic throw, he lost his balance as he flung it in front of Trossard. And I wonder, just wonder, would Martinelli have been able to canter clear of the defender? Roarslev did really well to get back, because in the early stages, and it all happened in a blink of an eye, but the early stages of it, Trossard looked to have a yard or two advantage, but he wasn't able to hold on to that. Yeah, he was away. As I say to you, just couldn't push it, go across the defender. Recovery runs were excellent, but I'll give Ramsdale a bit of confidence, won't it, with an assist like that. You know, be desperate for it to go in the back of the net. Yeah, big roar of encouragement for the Arsenal fans for that moment too for their goalkeeper as well. If you're joining a coverage late, no David Raya today because he is still on loan from Brentford. He is ineligible against his parents' club. And Tony, who's been linked for so long with the move to Arsenal. Arsenal fans getting to see up close what he can do in the flesh he's had one goal line clearance he's had one attempt on target Ivan Tony nil nil on Sports Extra from 5 Live this is Odegaard just outside the penalty area clever ball into the path of uh, Havertz who tried to shoot first time left footed too many defenders in the way it comes back to Odegaard again and Arsenal are able to do this they attack in waves just when you think it's broken down they come again with a surge Rice has it on the far side infield Kivior Gabriel back out to Declan Rice he attacks the corner edge of the area he's got Trossard with him Brentford can't get a touch at the moment Arsenal holding on to it in the attacking third Saliba's put under pressure now by Wissa but he keeps it going that's lovely between Jorginho and Trossard Collins stabs out but he can't get full control of it as Brentford just about clear away but Arsenal come again nil-nil the Emirates White into Jorginho strokes it forward into the penalty area lovely touchdown for Trossard they won the penalty as Odegaard goes down and the referee Rob Jones was close to that and he says no and there's no flinch from the assistant either VAR will look at the background but the on-field decision is no penalty yeah it was interesting clip Jorginho into the path of Odegaard and then there's a little flick inside Odegaard drives into the penalty area then he is just shoved isn't he I think it was Norgaard who just pushes him off it everybody's asking for that penalty kick Saka again down the right hand side for Arsenal still no goals in North London White gets his foot underneath it great cross in and a great header from Declan Rice Arsenal take the lead 19 minutes on the clock Declan Rice who's had more Premier League goals this season than any previous campaign in his career that is his sixth in the top flight and didn't he take it well Two goals in two games for Declan Rice. Arsenal lead Brentford 1-0. And as things stand, Mikel Arteta's team are on their way to the top of the Premier League tonight. Wow, what a moment. Declan Rice it seems to be getting better and better. Is he going to be the one? Is he going to be the difference? Is he just goes into the penalty area? Great work down the right-hand side. Saka and White just delivers it. And he just steps across and heads it. Just leans in. And he's Rosalev, can't get any way out of the way, and he just guides it into that far corner with a glancing header, just uses the pace. He's not just a six, he's the all-round midfielder. He just seems to be carrying Arsenal. I asked the question, didn't I? Would he be able to do it today? Carry his side over the line. Well, what a start for him? In over 200 league appearances for West Ham, Teclan Rice only ever scored 10 league goals. 
He's now up to six already in his fledgling Arsenal career. And if Brentford had put up a stern resistance and even asked a few questions in those opening 18, 19 minutes, well, Arsenal have come up with answers very quickly. And they've had a knack lately of once they get their noses in front, absolutely running away with games. And Thomas Frank's side face a big next 10 minutes now to ensure that Arsenal don't get too many, you know, too much wind in those sails. Big tussle taken down again. Jorgensen this time. Yeah, it's a huge tackle right through the back. Referee right on top of it. And it is a reaction when they start to bop it, move it around. And great yeah, little touches. Guys. Trossard, very clever, very intelligent. He just sees the challenge coming, just sets it off. Luckily, he's already up. He knows the contact's coming. If not, you keep your legs on that floor. You're in danger when it's sliding through the back of you. Referee straight away. This is the yellow card. So yellow cards for Onyeka and Matthias Jorgensen and Gabriel in this game already. 1-0 Arsenal lead thanks to Declan Rice, who's quite wonderful header. Brilliant cross as well. And Arsenal, who have been full of confidence and why not, given the run that they've been on. Mikel Arteta's team looking for an eighth Premier League win in a row since the turn of the year and any team in the past of the Premier League that's had anything like a start like this has always gone on to win the title start to a new calendar year the the way they have just flawlessly blown opponents away in recent weeks has been so impressive and surely it looks like Arsenal have learned from last season when their campaign faltered in the second you know that maybe the last third of the campaign this time round they appear to have learned from those lessons and if anything Arsenal looks stronger now than they did in the first stage of the season I think that's the question marks isn't it of are they being underestimated this Arsenal side because they're scoring goals freely wonderful way great energy mature wanting to play quickly seem very fit very bright the energy levels are fantastic and all sorts of different ways but this guy who's just going to touch it Declan Rice it's all round game Collins under pressure on the edge of the penalty area from Rice manages to wriggle away and touch it back to the goalkeeper Flecken nothing Flecken could do about the Arsenal goal that was planted beyond him Flecken goes along towards Ivan Toni socks low down around his ankles Jorginho helping out Gabriel header from air towards Toni again leaning backwards falls into Gabriel who's got to be careful on the yellow card referee says no free kick and play on Arsenal 1 Brentford 0 White rolls it back to Aaron Ramsdale. Sixth appearance since Raya's arrival for Ramsdale. Three of them now have been against Brentford, so he certainly knows this opponent well. Ball goes out of play on the far side for a throw into the visitors. So what does Thomas Frank do from here? Form has been disappointing for Brentford lately. They are 16 points worse off than they were at this stage last season. Trossard tries to control, it was an awkward one, ball came to him from high up and he wasn't able to control it but Kivior does, Arsenal regain possession, warm applause around the Emirates, here's Kivior again near the centre circle with the yellow boots, comes forward and lays it on to the German Kai Havertz, now out to the right wing, Bukayo Saka attacking the penalty area, low ball, brilliant touch from Odegaard, can he get the shot away, gives it on to Havertz, saved by Flecken some beautiful touches in the build-up there from Arsenal. They just look so good to the eye. The players technically fantastic, wanting to make things happen. Wonderful little turn. Odegaard under pressure. Norgaard coming tight. He just drifts back, pulls it with his back foot out of his feet. He's trying to find an opening. Havertz as well gets his shot away. Flecking delighted as he just puts that knee to the floor, collects it in, but they're under a great amount of pressure. Arsenal. Just playing so well, so confident, dynamic. It's exciting to watch the stadium as well, the atmosphere, everything about them, and what an opportunity. Top of the league at this stage, would you have said it? Ireland have got another try at Twickenham. England 8, Ireland 17 with a conversion to come. Here in North London, Arsenal 1, Brentford 0, 25 minutes played. Mikel Arteta's team, as things stand, going to the top of the Premier League tonight. Liverpool play Manchester City tomorrow, and that game is live on 5 Live. It's a strange kickoff time, 3.45, full coverage with correspondent John Murray on 5 Live. Here comes Gabriel, 10 yards into Brentford territory. 
Gives it short to Martin Odegaard. To his right-hand side is William Saliba. Arsenal thoroughly in control, Michael Brown. They are, and just Brentford just waiting, delaying. The problem is, once you have that goal, and that's the difference, isn't it? They, Arsenal are up, the firing. Brentford think, well, OK, when is it? When do we change our game plan? When do we start progressing forward? I don't think they can yet. I think they've just got to wait, Connor, delay as much as possible, try and stay in the game. Don't concede any more at this point because then Arsenal will really take it on. Jack Crowley missed the conversion for Ireland, so it remains England 8, Ireland 17. Ireland will win the uh, Six Nations if they get the bonus point victory. It's all going towards a grand slam, though, next weekend for Andy Farrell's team. As Odegaard gives it to White on the right-hand side. Back into Martin Odegaard. This is just a the penalty area. What a turn by Saka. Hoist it up over the goalkeeper. No one at the back post. Roarsled had to be sure he heads it out for a corner. But Arsenal are just toying with Brentford here. Yeah, Odegaard, he's absolutely playing on top of his game. The orchestra in the middle. That left foot, wonderful passes, vision to play balls forward. He just comes on the edge of the area. Reverse pass into Saka as he hits the byline. Deft little touch, there's nobody there as he just dinks it, little sand wedge to the back post, but Brentford managed to clear it away, and, and now another set piece, will the deliver be as good? Oh, I still score a lot of goals from corners, most of their players are housed at the far post from where this is going to come in, now they scramble forward, Rice's delivery, and the header is up and away by Gabriel, he was trying to flick it onto the front post, it is wide of the target, two Brentford players might have bundled into each other there. There's two of them who've been down and slow to get back up to their feet. Another good delivery from Declan Rice. One nil it remains. The wind's perfect, isn't it? The conditions, it just drifts all the way in towards that far post. Desperate defending from Brentford. Gabriel just attacking it. And because they come from such a deep position, it's hard to mark. They must feel that that suits them. The right delivery. People can go and run and attack that front post. Arteta pointing, demanding as he just steps on that white line in front of his technical area, he's got to be delighted and you know what it'll mean to him, that fire in his belly, driving the team forward, the demands that he sets upon himself and his team and to the final 20 laps now at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix for Stappen leaves from Perez the Red Bull pair leading the way, coverage of that available right now on the BBC Sport website here on 5 Live Sports Extra Arsenal 1, Brentford 0, throw in for the home side, Ben White, who knows Brentford's Ivan Tony well, they were teammates at Peterborough together in the past, and Keith Yor here plays a pass up to Trossard on the left wing, Roarslev getting back into position, Trossard comes infield of him and gives it short to Jorginho, then across the edge of the penalty area, Brentford player went down there off the ball, I'm not sure what happened there, this is White, White's lost it on the edge of the box, on the Ecker tries to charge away, fouled by Odegaard, free kick to Brentford, which is taken quickly, Tony wallops it in front of Wissen, maybe that was less haste, more speed there, he's taken it too quickly Ivan Tony, or has he, hang on, because Wissen's won the ball away from Kivior, Arsenal with a mistake there, ball in towards Tony, can't control in the penalty area, Ben White clears away to Rice. Yes, the the one breakaway that is the danger isn't it with uh, Ivan Tony, so they can't score a goal this Brentford side but whether they want to delay it a bit longer they try to move it very very quickly but they're under so much pressure the runs are excellent it's forward decision making that they're playing Odegaard is on the ball all the time look how good he looks Martin Odegaard who has yet to win a trophy in his career I mean he's been around forever hasn't he he broke through as an absolute kid Real Madrid paid a fortune for him as a young teenager any trophies Madrid won though, he was out on loan and he is hoping to get his first bit of silverware as Arsenal captain this season Odegaard to the right hand side to Ben White, level with the edge of the penalty area back into Odegaard, everything's going through the number 8 plays the ball into the penalty area which I assume was meant as a pass but it goes all the way through to Flecken and there's going to be a delay here, Flecken kicks the ball out of play so that is it Norgard who's gone down can get some treatment Arsenal won, Brentford nil. half an hour played at the Emirates Christian Norgard lying flat on his back and on comes the Brentford physio to check if he's OK. He's not the only one who's been around for quite a while. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a couple of us, Connor, you know, one or two. But listen, I just think if there's a slight injury there, Brentford are going to try and take the time. They're going to the wait, delay. Thomas Frank, get everybody around. Mikel Arteta, 
it's one of these now where there's that stoppage, that delay, the coaches, all the staff around and trying to give some details. Seeing the delight now, that rerun, Declan Rice saying, come on. It's only the finish that he had as he just glides into the penalty area and just drifts that header into the far post and he's got to be delighted with his move so far how it's going he'll be desperate to, to deliver a Premier League title because he will get all of the rewards I'm sure so a break in play here while Nogard, Nogard gets some treatment he's being escorted off the pitch he looks like he's got to be okay Mikel Arteta took advantage of that delay to have an impromptu team talk all the players were brought over even the goalkeeper Ramsdale Arteta's got to be pleased but and you can see him down this pointing to his temple he's tapping his head he's saying concentrate don't let this slip now Ramsdale will be saying leave off me don't have another go at me I'm only just playing half an hour I'm just enjoying being out there in front of the supporters he will have waited a, a long time for this wouldn't he Ramsdale but the detail now the staff all the support that they get unbelievable excellent quality now and that's the difference in it. They see something in the stand all around us. The analyst is just dropping a little bit of information. Arsenal 1, Brentford 0. Flicken booms it away down the field. Gabriel jumps and runs. This is a very young Arsenal team. Average age just 25. They've been the third youngest average age team in the Premier League this season. It all bodes very well for the future. But of course, Arsenal want to win in the here and the now. Saliba jumps well, gets a header. Back by Collins for Brentford. Wissa's able to control it. He's looked good today, Wissa. Then a slip by Onyeka as he tries to play one over the top. And I think he sent that a bit further than he meant to. Down goes Gabriel under pressure from Jan Elton. The referee blows the whistle. Much to the Arsenal defender's relief. Yeah, the defender has been aggressive from Arsenal. Wherever there's a 1v1 situation, they're going to go tight. They're going to go strong. They know Brentford can commit and get into different situations. But... It's been a wonderful first half an hour from an Arsenal point of view. Thomas Frank, he's got that experience now of not really too fussed. If he doesn't get the ball, he'll wait and he'll know his side can come forward. And I just want to stay in it. He's having a tough old time of it results-wise, Yeah, Thomas Frank. you know, and, and he's got a lot stored up in the bank. He's a lot of goodwill. I think Brentford have made an awful lot of friends since coming up to the Premier League. But there's no doubt the standards this season have been a letdown compared to what we saw before. Arsenal attack again. White's delivery in. Collins heads it out. Kivior is going to collect for Arsenal. Far side of the pitch from us. We've got to understand as well, though, that the amount of players that they had missing right through the heart, the, full, uh, the areas in the wide positions, wing backs, etc. Ivan Tony at the top of the pitch. So, you know, and then they come when they all came back, they had a really bad run of fixtures ahead of them. So now we'll hopefully see some improvement. I mean, if you look at the, the first choice back four that Brentford have had last season, they've all been injured this season, the whole back four. And so Habits tried to pull one back across the edge of the six-yard box there, but it was cleared away. And then Tony tries a little backheeled volley, which doesn't work, and the ball goes out for a throw into Arsenal, which Odegaard takes quickly, and everything's been so fast from Arsenal here. Odegaard to the byline, trying to flick it into Saka, and he nearly reached it too. Matthias Jorgensen is there to clear away, but it's like Odegaard and, and Havertz and Jorginho, they're all operating at a higher plane at the moment. Lightning fast speed of thought. Yeah, because when they've got the ball as well, they can do different things, special players when you're winning games as well it's a little reverse pass and other guards to the byline trying to jink it inside to sack it just runs away but we're finally looking to make that change Brentford because they have been under pressure there's been that injury carrying and they've had to do it yeah uh, Matthias Jensen's going to come on in place of Christian Norgard who, who just looks uncomfortable as he makes his way off the field and up against this Arsenal Central three, they can't afford to carry anyone, so Matthias Jensen comes in. He's been a regular throughout the campaign, and he will join Onyeka and Yenelt in a Brentford midfield that has so far been overrun at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal lead by a goal to nil on Sports Extra. Ten minutes to go to half time. White's throw in, flicked on by Havertz. Can't pick out a teammate though. Wissa tries to head it away, and it goes to Saliba. Now back to Kivior. Arsenal near the halfway line with Declan Rice, the goal scorer. Wonderful header from Rice. And what could be a big year for him with the Euros to come. And I say this as an Irishman, Michael, but a lot of England players look to be in the form of their lives at the moment. Bellingham, Foden. Here comes a German. Havertz into the penalty area. A 
across the face of goal and wide. Flecken came out to try and narrow the angle. Havertz tried to dink it over him, just off target. Yeah, it's really tight as well. We're getting another look at it. Just wait, pulls on the shoulder. His touch is excellent. It looks like he was going to run away. He did everything right. Flecken approaching. He just tries to clip it over him, agonizingly. Just drifts wide. It misses the target by some, though. But wonderful ball in the midfield area. Eugenio Havertz on the the same page but you know, it's going back to your point England players playing well getting into good position scoring affecting games that's what we want to see this is Trossard to Declan Rice just inside his own half back to Jorginho Jorginho who back in his Chelsea day scored a penalty against Brentford in the League Cup match White gives it to Bukayo Saka. It's all very easy and straightforward for Mikel Arteta's team at the moment, but Arteta will want the insurance policy of a second goal here. 1-0 is always a dangerous lead in a Premier League game with so long still to play. But so far, so good for Arsenal. They're a bit to go top of the table and put a bit of extra pressure on Klopp and Guardiola tomorrow. Trossard coming in off the touchline on the far side. Rice can't control it. Came to him sort of stomach height. Jorgensen touches it. Back to the goalkeeper and Flecken's clearance up towards the halfway line. Brentford can't hold it up at all. They clear it away towards the Arsenal defence and they immediately lose it. And time and time again, Arsenal come back towards them. This occasion, Gabriel rolls it back to Ramsdale. His pass over to Ben White. This is on the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. White goes back to Ramsdale once again. Now Gabriel, now Kivior. As they look to play their way up towards the halfway line. Trossard, Roslev in behind him. Trossard smuggles it back. Applause from the Arsenal fans. He managed to squeeze out of a tight corner there. Rice continues to pick up positions wide on the left-hand side. And now he's coming forward, running at Jorginho. At, um, Jorgensen, I should say. Here's Saka into the penalty area on the right. Taking on Collins and hoisting it up over the top. Had that been a little lower, it might even have nestled into the far top corner. But Saka puts it out for a goal kick to Brentford, who trail here by a goal to nil. Yeah, wonderful counter-attack. Brentford tried to narrow up. It's on for Saka just to run and commit. I think he's better than that, really. I think he's caught in two minds when he's trying to get a shot into the far post or just cross, just fire it across that six-yard area. But the space was there, they developed the counter-attack quick and then they switched the play so quickly, sometimes with a short pass, then the long pass we've just seen before. Havertz getting on the long one, so it's a mixed bag. It's different ways to score, set pieces, long and short, crosses and hold up play. Here's Jensen for Brentford. Gives it up to Wisser, onto Lewis Potter, well closed down by Saliba, and out comes Ramsdale to grab the ball, and a big roar of encouragement. They're trying to keep his spirits up, the Arsenal fans. Again, he goes long with the distribution, but too far in front of Trossard and picked out by Matthias Jorgensen. Brentford have it again. Arsenal went 1-0 up in this game last season before Brentford came back to earn a draw. Thomas Frankel just hoped that that can repeat itself. Jan Elt back to Matthias Jorgensen, who's now started four games in a row. It's been his best run on the side for over a year. Flecken plays it back to the Dane once again, then infield to Jan Elt. Jan Elt, who's sort of taken up the Norgard position since uh, Norgard went on. That's some pass to pick out Lewis Potter. That must have travelled the bones of 70 yards. Then Lewis Potter is held up by White as he tries to cross, and Arsenal doing so well at repelling any sort of Brentford attack. Here is Onyeka. Back out to Lewis Potter on the left-hand side. Ten yards outside the penalty area that Brentford attack. Back to the centre circle. Christopher Ayer to Matthias Jorgensen. On to Mads Rorslev. He'll cross on the right-hand side. Looking for Tony. Well held by Ramsdale. He had to stretch up high. The ball stuck to his gloves. It's a great take. We've seen that moment before. He tried that, that throw quickly. It just ran away, didn't it, from Trossard on this occasion. Deep cross from that right-hand side. Wonderful take. He's had a little look at it. And now with his feet, what does he do? It was direct and... That's one of the question marks, isn't it? The, whether he could do that, whether he could improve Arsenal with his feet, and that's why he missed out, but he did OK there. That's the voice of Michael Brown watching this game with us at the Emirates. Arsenal leading Brentford by a goal to nil, and on the charge is the goal scorer, Declan Rice. Tries to break into the penalty area, tackled by Matthias Jorgensen. Oh, it's a terrible clearance by him again. He's given it straight to Odegaard. Ten yards outside the penalty area, slightly left of centre. 
Arsenal would love a second goal by half time Saka drifts into a more central position than we've seen him today Jorginho to Kivior back to Gabriel a whirl of passes in front of the Brentford penalty area Gabriel involved again edges a little bit closer to that box gives it to Kivior on the left hand side and these will be energy sapping sequences of players Brentford trying to stick close and trying to deny Arsenal opportunities Trossard turns in an arc in front of the D Dummies to shoot then he does shoot he was a long way out Flecken makes the save he would have needed to be spectacular for Trossard to score from there yeah it will be a good play everybody just queuing up waiting for little gaps positions to open but Trossard steps forward pushes it out with that right foot he sees that little opening the shot comfortable down the right hand side for Flecken and the count is still on though and a long ball played by Brentford carries all the way through to the goalkeeper Ramsdale tell you what it's all kicking off at Twickenham Ireland 2 had a comfortable lead now trail England 18 Ireland 17 tries from Lawrence and Furbank and kicks from Ford have put England back in front in the Six Nations Ireland who were hotly fancied going into that one Commentary available right now on our sister station, 5 Live. Four minutes to go to the break here at the Emirates. And Mark Flecken clears the ball out for a throw-in on the far side. You seem to be smiling when you're delivering them, them results there, weren't you? On the rugby a little bit? No, or not? Or was I mistaken? England have just got another two. England 2017. There's no smiling from this side of the commentary box, Mr Brown. And I've been very complimentary about the England footballers, so come on. I'm very complimentary come on, come about on. it as well. Here yeah, is Trossard. You. I know you're fair. Oh, God, he's given it away to Tony. Brentford looking to spring a counter-attack, but they don't have the energy in the legs, and White is able to pick it up very quickly. Uh, it can be demoralising when you play against a, a team as dominant as Arsenal here. It's almost like Brentford don't expect to get little half chances, so when they do come their way, difficult to switch on and suddenly grasp them. Arsenal have it with Ramsdale again away to our left-hand side wearing green. I think when the score's like this, though, I think you realise you can come back at any point. So it's just, can we get to half-time? Can we keep it at this sort of distance? It has been total domination. Gabriel though. in front of Trossard into the penalty area. Pulls in across. Saka gets up, hit on the volley by Havertz. And he couldn't keep it down. It's over the crossbar and out for a goal kick. Saka tried to jump and head it. It was just too high for him. And then Havertz tried to adapt and get his body shape right and he wasn't able to get the technique that was needed. Two minutes to go to the break, Arsenal still lead Brentford 1-0. What's really impressive is the forward runs with intensity, the weight of the pass, the quality as it gets into good areas, the cross comes in, you see Saka is waiting, just misses it. Havertz coming around with that left foot, just couldn't direct it back towards goal and for all this domination, Thomas Frank, you're Brentford, you sort of go OK, it's not that bad, it was something to build on, something to go at, Arsenal, all oh, this pressure, need to get a second. Down goes Havertz, he wants a free kick, the referee uh, says no, Brentford have possession, Nathan Collins under pressure, helped out by Jan Elt, Lewis Potter hoops it on, but anyone will do, no accuracy to that clearance. Trossard with a calming header gets it back for Kivior and then it's popped over the top for Odegaard to sprint after and although Rosa have got there um, it was uh, Ayr who got there first Odegaard was able to get it off him he's Norwegian international colleague Jorginho now to Trossard to Saka just outside the D Arsenal keeping up this high tempo Odegaard urged to shoot sends it in Ayer jumps and wins a header on the edge of the six yard box Brentford under immense pressure but they are holding it to 1-0 for now. Yeah, there's just nowhere to go, though. And then Tony is uh, just finding it tough. They haven't got the ball, the wider areas. They're just pinning that back five into the shape. And then the midfielders joining in, all the space for Odegaard. And he's Declan Rice again. And his cross from the left-hand side is wild. And it sails over everyone, including Saka, and goes out for a goal kick. It's just that overload, isn't it? Declan Rice at this point. He's finding a position, the delivery's good, no pressure on the ball in sort of Jorginho's territory in and around those positions, and the runs are good. That's why we've seen so much, haven't we? Odegaard, Declan Rice, and Havertz, Trossard, Saka, all being good. Brentford is still in it, they're hanging in, they've got a fight, they've got a resilience about them. And they'll be just looking and thinking, being in the midfield before against sides like this, where you're away and you're struggling in the Premier League, 
you're thinking is let's just get inside let's get some detail let's get a rest I've oh, got a very big week to come uh, Wissa has gone down it's a head injury so the referee is holding play but I don't think it's going to be a free kick to Brentford the only reason the referee has stopped play is because it is a head injury but if Arsenal win this game they go top Liverpool who host Manchester City tomorrow Arsenal's next game is in the Champions League the home leg against Porto where they've got to try and come from behind to the Champions League on Tuesday then next weekend Arsenal go away to Manchester City I mean that is a huge week for Mikel Arteta that could quite literally make or break their season well it's big everybody's looking to that that game at the Etihad we've got other games as well so this is it it's the business end of the season we've got to get through this Champions League so important for that momentum as well the players will be desperate to deliver in that but Joe can this squad cope are they in a better position we think they are so interested at the top of this Premier League this is where we are this week this is what's in front of them and you know who would bet against them they, it's, it, they're just getting better 1-0 Arsenal lead free kick to the visitors and Kai Havertz the guilty party here who's gone in forcefully with uh, Christopher Ayer They're jumping in the air and it's a swing of the arm and oh, it's the elbow that does collide with the face of the opponent. So the VAR will look at this, I'm sure, in the background. But the yellow card is out. It's a confirmation, but I'm pretty sure Habits has been booked. VAR will still look to see if there's any further case to answer. I think he swings his arm. It's in a dangerous position. His VAR needs to get involved too much. Not for me. You can see yellow card deals with it. No problem. Let's get on with the game. Yes, there's a slight injury. But I do think Brentford are just delaying it. A little bit more than usual. The last few injuries that they've had, but he has caught one. Referee sort of explaining why he makes these decisions. And it's that breather, isn't it, for me? Because it's been total control yeah. from Arsenal. Now, I think one of the Brentford players has got booked for complaining here as well. I'm not 100% sure of this, so we'll confirm it in a moment. But uh, the card is still out for referee Rob Jones. We're not missing any live action because Christopher Ayer is still lying on the ground maybe Jones was just writing in the name of Kai Havertz on the card it just seems strange that he was holding it while talking to the Brentford players anyway another break in play more to ponder for Mikel Arteta and for Thomas Frank he might just be spell checking just to <laughs> make sure he gets it right so here's a report is, it, <laughs> is that Kai with an eye has he, he got it correct or not yeah. so uh, we're midway through the stoppage period this will all be added on ahead of the break in the second half, we'll be joined by listeners in Five Live once that rugby is finished at Twickenham. And during half time here, we will hear um, updates from what's happened elsewhere today, up and down the land. It's been a busy day of sport across all codes. And play will resume here. Eyes back up at his feet, having got that blow to the face, and he's okay to continue. So at the end of all that, it was a yellow to Kai Havertz, and, and that was it. He did, he did swing now, didn't he? He did catch him. The frustration. The Emirates are, are facing. I don't think they need to get too frustrated. That suit, you know, me, the fans are getting frustrated. I say that's fine, we're all right, we're still in it. Well, still fans who've been almost spoiled lately with the, the gluttony of goals that they've been able to score in games. We've won the actually feels low scoring by Arsenal standards here. They had that one, wasn't it? Was it eight successive Premier League halves in a row that they scored at least two goals in, which no one's ever even nearly done that before in Premier League history. That came to an end when they didn't score two in the second half at, at Sheffield United on Monday. Of course, they were already 6-0 in front. Um, but this will be another half where they don't score two. And, and the only reason I'm mentioning it, I mean, that's no disgrace. Oh, oh, what's Ramsdale done here? He's been charged down by Wissa and Aaron Ramsdale on his return to the Arsenal team has dropped an absolute clangor. He's dilly-dallied on the ball. He looks like he's seen a ghost. He can't believe it. Wissa charges in to put a challenge on the goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale and with David Raya looking on in the stands ineligible to play against his parent club Ramsdale's mistake has cancelled out Arsenal's lead ahead of half time Michael Brown there was no danger there there was no danger he just waits and what he does he tries to play it through the centre and he's got to just carry on the way he's going out to that right hand side but full credit to Vissa he doesn't give it up he keeps going he chases Gabriel he then goes for the next one 
just slides right across that Ramsdale and when it's not going for you it just bounces up the disappointment as he just rubs his gloves there as it just drops into the net astonishing at the end Arteta looks like he's fuming with his arms crossed Aaron Ramsdale looks physically sick he looks like his world has just collapsed there having waited so long to get back into this team he has made an almighty howler there he's controlled the ball he's done this little extra motion Michael sort of steadying himself before walloping the ball away he didn't have time for that just get rid of it you're on your goal line there's a guy running in at you you know, just get rid but is he allowed to do that he always has to pass that's the problem because he thinks I've got to play I've got to pass I've got to bring someone in then the last wow. second under pressure he just goes to pull it he needed to go out to the angle that he was and look how things change and it's sad football's a lonely place these supporters will get behind Aaron Ramsdale they'll understand what he's gone through he has to recover he has to come back out a few of the staff will just walk it was, it was brilliant from some of his players as well by the way centre-backs all the players around him Arsenal straight over to Ramsdale they know what it means to him and that was a bit of support all the substitutes over to him now that little high five and a pat he won't really want that but what, a, what an interesting ending to this first half what about that the timing of it in the fifth minute of stoppages has brought Brentford back on level terms it is a goal that will be celebrated as vigorously on Merseyside and in Manchester as it will be in West London Brentford are back on level terms here poor Aaron Ramsdale he looks like his heart is broken as he makes his way down into the tunnel but in the wider context of the title race this is a huge development Arsenal completely dominated that first half but one mistake has been punished and that's what happens to you in the Premier League that's what happens and I said when you don't get that second goal for all the dominance for all the belief Brentford will feel like they've got an opportunity you know they've got a threat at the top of the pitch they've got a resilience a fight about them but that's a huge mistake in a key game Ramsdale was he overconfident was he not what was the delay all about Whistler as well you've got to give him that compliment you've got to give him the desire that he showed to get into that position as he slides right across normally when we see that ricochet as well it just flies away and on this occasion when it's not going for you it just bounced up and you almost knew didn't you you just waited and it just dropped into that corner and that shock on his face struck it is Arsenal 1 Brentford 1 that equaliser from Whistler has made this very exciting now his 5th Premier League goal of the season on what he sees 100th appearance for Brentford Brentford who've lost 12 of their last 16 Premier League games but but they are right back in this it's a huge second half to come come back to us for that um, and as ever on a Saturday it's been a busy day of sport with all of the action covered in 5 Live Sport let's get the news of the rest of the day's sporting headlines with Steve Crossman Elsewhere in the Premier League, a stoppage time goal from Corley Woodrow saw Luton Town snatch a draw against Crystal Palace. Here's Luton boss Rob Edwards with George Cummins. Well, uh, Rob, just sum up, sum up how you're feeling. What an end to the game for you. It was a great end to the game for us. It was, um, it was such a challenging day. We obviously, and it's you know it's well documented. There's I know there's a number of teams struggling with injuries at the moment, but we got a lot, and um, and then to have to bring two centre backs off during the game as well made it really challenging for us. You know, in a day where it was already difficult for us to be to have loads of rhythm and, and we weren't at our best uh, credit to Palace for that there wasn't loads in the game uh, I think possession was split evenly but they probably had it, they, you know, edged it first half I thought we had momentum in the second half but couldn't really create loads of chances and crosses coming in but not loads of quality in that final third um, and then to have to you know juggle the pack and shuffle the pack like we did um, force changes players deserve a lot of credit um, so it's a good feeling now as disappointed as we felt last week after losing a point late on you know we've got one there I think it just says a lot about the group that, that you know they don't know when they're beaten they keep going we have scored a lot we know we conceded late as well but we have scored a lot of late goals and that point could be huge for us going forward In the Championship leaders Leicester City drop points they were held to a 2 all draw at Hull City Ipswich stay third after losing at Cardiff at lunchtime the host scored twice in stoppage time Southampton are fourth after a dramatic 4-2 win over Sunderland Stoke moved out of the relegation zone after winning 2-1 at Preston back in the Premier League Sheffield United had to settle for a point after leading 2-0 at Bournemouth it finished 2 all. here's manager Chris Wilder with John Akers Chris so near and yet so far yeah, it would have been a big three points. You know, I'm I'm realistic. You know, any sort of result today, off the back of what happened Monday, would have been a good uh, a good result, and we've got that. 
you showed some good resilience. Your players showed some resilience, didn't they? Yeah, I don't know if you you uh, you looked at the end. There was there was bodies everywhere. It was like a war zone. <laughs> Everyone had cramp. <laughs> Everybody had cramp. There was uh, there was people going down. You know, we're making physical substitutions, which is, you know, listen is maybe a longer term sort of talk about that in terms of you know robustness and recruitment and and and, and everything else that that goes with. But you can never build any sort of momentum. You know, you're taking people off at, at, at key times because they don't, they can't last the race. And you know, you know, you, you're really hoping and fingers crossed that those boys don't be out, don't get injured, and, and, and obviously be out for a, for a big certain period. And it's a point to take into the next home game as well. We're off the bottom. You know, so we'll, we'll 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 take that. We've got a big home game coming up. We've got two or three weeks now. Obviously, we don't play next Saturday. We've got an international break. So, you know, there's a big chunk of uh, period there. So hopefully, we can get three or four of the players back. And uh, we have to do so much better at home now. That's got to be the focus. Chris Wilder. Portsmouth's lead in League One is down to five points. They were held to a goalless draw at 10-man Blackpool. Derby up to second after winning 3-0 at Bristol Rovers. Bolton dropped to third after drawing two all at Exeter. The early game in the Premier League. Uh, penalty from Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford. Enough for Manchester United to beat Everton at Old Trafford. United boss Eric Ten Hag has been speaking to Steve Wilson. Eric, congratulations. Um, you needed to win and um, it was fairly comfortable for you in the end. You always have to fight for your points. And there are no easy games, and especially not Everton. I think they have a very good style of play, very good structure, uh, difficult to beat. Um, also, other teams very struggling with them, so we really complement. But I have to say, we have we created a lot of chances, and we had very good counter attacks. Uh, I think overall we could have scored three, four goals, and I think we defended very well. Um, they had attempts, but you know, we dealt with this. Uh, our back four. Uh, but not only all back four, don't forget the keeper and don't forget all the other players. Uh, we defended as a team very well. Your two penalties were both brilliantly taken, weren't they? I mean, they're, Bruno and Marcus are terrific penalty takers and the, they very straightforward decisions, obviously penalties, and very well taken. I think so, but it's more the setup, uh, how we came in behind, and Alejandro uh, did brilliant. And it was really tempo dribbles, and then it's very difficult to stop. Um, so he um, he deserved the penalties. Uh, it was, as you say, quite obvious. Maybe we, we should have even uh, had a penalty more uh, with a handball, uh, where Bruno was in a position to finish. But yeah, it's also part of the game, and and we took them well, as you say. And we are very good penalty takers with Bruno, with Resi, also Casemiro, Christian Eriksen. Um, yeah, it's a part of football. Eric Ten Hag. Mansfield stay three points clear in League Two after beating Swindon. Second place Stockport won at Newport. Wrexham stay third thanks to a 3-1 victory at 10-man Morecambe. Uh, Wolves beat Fulham by two goals to one at Molyneux. Here's manager Gary O'Neill with Pat Murphy. Your celebrations at the end, have you been rehearsing them? Are they, are they coming naturally? No, forced into them by the supporters. Um, they forced me to do them. So, um, I mean, I'm delighted that they're happy. So... Um, I hope they're. They, I hope they're really, really proud of their team today because that they, they should be because the team gave absolutely everything there. I mean, if I was a a Wolves fan, which obviously I am at this moment, but if I'd grown up being a Wolves fan and you asked me what I wanted to see from my team, that that would be it. So um, I think the players deserve an awful lot of credit, and I'm sure the supporters have, as they always do, given their full backing again. They'll be back again next Saturday and get behind the boys and let's see what we can do. This is a fan base that's in love with your team. Is that too stretching too much of a point? I'm not sure. I don't listen to noise, really, um, apart from when it's out there and it's ringing around the stadium. Like I was in media stuff and I'm just really focused on what we're trying to do. So I feel that they love their team at this moment. It can change quickly because losing football matches changes everything. But um, I can guarantee them that if we lose, it'll be trying as hard as we can. So... I think they've sort of accepted that. They understand that the group is giving their what can and we will fall short on certain things, but um, it won't be for a lack of effort or, or togetherness. In Scotland, Neil Warnock has stepped down as Aberdeen's interim manager less than an hour after leading the club to the Scottish Cup semi-finals. He was watching his team beat Kilmarnock 2-1, then announced that he's going to leave. Aberdeen, uh, Dave McCormack says the club are at an advanced stage in their search for a replacement. Uh, so yeah, Neil Warnock is going with immediate effects. England's men's cricketers are preparing to leave India after another humiliating defeat, this time in the final test match
match of the series. Uh, the host just needed 48 overs to dismiss England this morning, winning by an innings and 64 runs and winning the series 4-1. Uh, historic moment, though, for Jimmy Anderson taking his 700th test wicket. Scores for you in the Welsh Premier League. Newtown 2, Cardiff met nil. Barrytown 1, Colwyn Bay won the game between Pontypreth and Aberystwyth was postponed. And in Northern Ireland, Ballymena 2, Crusaders 4, Carrick Rangers 0, Newry City 1, Colrain 0, Larne 0, uh, Glenarvan 4, Dungannon 0 and Glentoran 0. Lock goal 3. And very thanks to Steve Crossman for bringing us up to date with what's been happening up and down the land. Here at the Emirates Stadium, it is Arsenal 1, Brentford 1 after a dramatic first half. Arsenal, who played the better football, scored the opening goal through Declan Rice. But Aaron Ramsey on, uh, on Ramsdale on his return to the Arsenal team, because David Raya is ineligible against his parent club, has made a mistake, a fatal hesitation in stoppage time just before half time that allowed Joanna Wisser to nip in and score a goal to make it 1-1. Wisser, who's now scored in three Premier League matches in a row, scored against West Ham, scored against Chelsea. He's now scored against Arsenal. First time in his career that he's done that. And where is this game going to go next, Michael Brown? 1-1. Well, that is the question, isn't it? Do you know what? You stick at games, you, you have that fight, you have that belief, mistakes happen, but... It's about making runs, it's believing in yourself and your Brentford have been completely outclassed in that first half, but you know they've stuck to task and they get rewards for, for making runs at times that you, you wouldn't normally get to. And yes, Ramsdale's made that mistake. Arsenal were really, really good in this first half, but again, you've got to score the second, they've got to make sure that dominance counts when they're in key positions, they've got that firepower and you do feel like it's going to be business as usual, they're going to come and dominate, but now Brentford just have that little bit of fight, you come at the right time, they get that rest, they try and work out how they're better when Arsenal are overloading in the wider areas, the midfield runners need to get a little bit closer, but we've got a good second half ahead. It feels like the kind of game has done since the start that Brentford won't kind of get many chances felt key that they would take what opportunities did come their way Johan Wisser has certainly done that and 1-1 has completely changed the mood of what was a almost exultant Emirates Stadium now suddenly the nerves begin to creep in the fear that Arsenal might let this opportunity pass them by remember win this game and Mikel Arteta's team go to the top of the Premier League but they won't go top if they lose they won't go top if they draw and with Liverpool playing Manchester City tomorrow and at least one of them due to drop points this would be crazy if Arsenal were not to take the three and give themselves that fighting chance going into the closing stages of the title race. Ten Premier League matches to go after this one for Mikel Arteta and for Arsenal. We're still awaiting the return of the players back out onto the pitch after half-time. But I guess Michael Arteta will be telling his players, look, you've dominated there, one mistake has cost us, but if we play the way we did in the first half, we will win the game. I don't think there's anything different than that. I think he... He's got an important role. I'd be interested to know what player-manager relationship is between the goalkeeper and the manager, especially beforehand. Does he go and say, "This is what I need from you," or are they not really on best of talking points? And that's the, you know, that, that sometimes happens. Will he just go, "Don't, don't worry about it. Let's get on with it." Will he be critical? Will he be, will he be quite um, aggressive in his approach? Saying, "Why did you take so long? This is the detail I give you. This is what happened." So. His teammates were there to support him, but now they have to come out and continue with that type of performance. I thought they were really good, to be honest. I thought they were they were really um, attractive to the eye. They wanted to make things happen, the organisation. The distances between, obviously, defence midfield and the forward line were good. Runs were excellent. And it was a mixture of, again, like I said to you, short passes, long passes, crosses, runs in wide areas. And it's interesting. This is the way you've got to find different types of performances, grind out results, it doesn't come easy these Premier League titles and, and now they've got to fight in a, in a total different side, a second half where you thought they would have been cruising and Sharon Ramsdale who would have been wanting so dearly to make a good impression, you know you think back he started the opening few games of the season 
Arteta brings Raya in on loan. And actually, a lot of Arsenal fans were, were put out by that. They were upset as the teams come back out here. And, and Raya got a bit of stick himself in his opening games. And I think that is what will sting Ramsdale the most here because he knows there is a goodwill from the Arsenal fans. But even some of them will be thinking, gee, we brought him back in today and he's made a mistake. They'll begin to doubt if Ramsdale can be trusted going forward. Well, he has made a mistake, but when does he get to play a game, Connor? He doesn't get he, to he play. Mikel Arteta said, I will make changes throughout the way. And he didn't deliver that. So you can only wait so long. And despondent, he sat there disappointed, thinking... So he played at Brentford, didn't he? Now he gets another opportunity uh, uh, today, but there's just too long a gap without any any game time, any performances. Um, and do you know what he actually said as well? At certain times he'd make decisions. Well, when the five up and six up, why is he not giving him a run? Because he'd be in a better situation than he is now. Listen, I'm not defending Ramsdale today because that's a, you know, whatever you've not played, however rusty you are, that's poor from him, and he'll know that and he'll set his own standards. But he's not on his own when it comes to um, the situation that he's in. The manager's made that decision. He said he was going to do something that he's not done. And that's the only thing I would say. Arteta has been wonderful what he's delivered to this football club. That's probably the, one of the disappointing ones that I've got, that he hasn't really done it right. Drama at Twickenham, where England have landed a late drop goal from Marcus Smith to beat Ireland by 23 points to 22. Ireland do not secure the Six Nations Championship today and they won't be able to win the Grand Slam. Andy Farrell's team beaten at Twickenham. Huge day for Steve Borthwick in England. More reaction to come for that across Five Live and the BBC Sport website. But for now, we're about to get started for the second half. There is a lesson though, isn't it? You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. 100%. And we did see Ireland just take that lead and now changes so quickly. So, will there be changes so quickly in this game? Back underway, 1-1 of the Emirates, Arsenal against Brentford. Declan Rice's goal after 19 minutes. And then Joanna Wissers equaliser, five minutes into stoppages at the end of the first half. There have been no changes in personnel over the break. Brentford, who were forced into a substitution the first half, and Matthias Jensen came on in place of the injured Christian Norgaard. Arsenal will play from right to left in the second half, defending the clock end. Trossard has possession on the left-hand side, plays a little 1-2 with Declan Rice on the Eckert as well to nip in and win possession. Then he's swarmed upon by red shirts. Brentford hold on to it. Rorslev in the right wing back position. Where does he go here? Retreating back towards his corner flag. Trossard hacking away at him. And Rorslev with little choice than to just put it out for a throw. Throw into Arsenal. Attacking position down the left hand side. They take it quickly. Jorginho into Declan Rice. Sends it across. Which Odegaard hits with his right foot. But he was off balance. And he puts it over the crossbar. Bright start to the second period for Arsenal. Great start. That's exactly what they wanted. Positive passing with tempo. Urgency, great set, Saka, Odegaard coming forward, tries to strike on the half volley. Unfortunately on that right foot, he doesn't catch it well enough as he just glides over the crossbar. Flecking just steps forward, a goal kick, just waiting, delaying. They are going to get worse at that, I'm sure. Arsenal won, Brentford won. William Saliba wins a header, backpedalling. Ayer has to nod it back towards the halfway line. Jensen with a flick on. Flag goes up. Brentford with an offside position. Referees just play on because Arsenal still have the ball. Saka attacking the edge of the penalty area. Down the right hand side for Arsenal. Gives it back to Ben White. Odegaard with a little Cruyff turn inside the penalty area. Back out of the box to Saka again on the right hand side. He then nudges it in to Odegaard. It's all very intricate, very short, quick passes from Arsenal here. They still have it on the edge of the penalty area but it appears that Brighton have survived the initial threat of this Arsenal attack. Many Arsenal fans still making their way back from the half-time hospitality. Two minutes played in the second half already. This is Saliba, right-hand side for Arsenal. Gives it to Ben White, level with the edge of the penalty area. Back to Saliba again, out to Saka. They're trying to work the room here to deliver a dangerous cross. Here it comes from Saka. Rorslev, strong header on the edge of the six-yard box. Kivior picks it up for Arsenal. And Mikel Arteta's team come again. This is Trossard on the left-hand side. Pulls it back towards Gabriel. And we're about to join listeners who've been tuned to the rugby on Five Live here on Sports Extra at the Emirates Stadium where Arsenal fans are full of celebration. Saka attacks down the right-hand side. 
in on to his left boot. Now Martin Odegaard pushes it on to Trossard, edge of the box. Saka shoots, but it's too high. And it sails over the crossbar and it goes out for a goal kick. Yes, Arsenal won, Brentford won. Arsenal, who took the lead after 19 minutes through Declan Rice and were absolutely cruising. Mikel Arteta's team dominated the first period. However, right at the very end of it, Aaron Ramsdale, the goalkeeper, playing today because David Raya is ineligible against his parent club, dropped an enormous clangor. He hesitated with a clearance. Johan Wissa was able to charge in and score. That was in the fifth minute of stoppage time and it deflated the Arsenal tyres as the team went in at the break at 1-1 and on this day when Arsenal know they can go top of the Premier League if they win on this day in which they know that both Liverpool and Manchester City can both win because they play each other tomorrow this now Michael Brown is a huge second half of the Emirates a yeah, massive second half they were very very dominant in the first half it started well in this second half but that mistake was the blip they got to go and score a second but Brentford just Here keep come coming Brentford Tony touches it down for Wisher, who's been allowed to turn. Then he steadied himself to shoot, and Gabriel was able to lean in and deflect it out for a corner. Corner to Brentford on the left-hand side, which is the end of the Emirates, where the away fans are housed here. Brentford didn't attack much in the first half. Ramsdale didn't have much to do, but he'll have been haunted by that mistake. He's back in the spotlight. This only his sixth appearance for Mikel Arteta since David Raya's arrival. Three of the appearances have now been against Brentford and he's made a high profile error here which could be costly for Arsenal if they fail to get back into the game Brentford have really overloaded the attack for the corner they've seven or eight players inside the six yard box crowding in on top of Ramsdale the goalkeeper delivery's going to come from the far side Arsenal have had to bring everyone back it's really congested in there Ramsdale punches it in front of Gabriel but they got in each other's way and then when Yamel tried to follow up he couldn't keep it down and it spins out for a goal kick to Arsenal 1-1 of the Emirates on 5 Live and Sports Extra yeah, Ramsdale does well good punch as it just drops down Yamel tries to get that left foot around it he slices it into the far corner but it was a bit more pressure on Ramsdale but he coped he took the gamble, he come forward, but a big mistake, he will recover, I'm sure. But it's how does Arsenal team react, and I give them credit, they've been excellent in the first half, the whole team, and the way they've gone about it. Here comes Arsenal, Saka, to within 10 yards of the penalty area, gives it to his left-hand side to Kivior, and now Leandro Trossard, just outside the box, being held up by Onyeka, who's carrying a yellow card. Saka to the byline on the left, tries to send him across, which is blocked out by Vitaly Adelt for a corner. Corner to Arsenal on the left, still all square in North London. Yeah, wonderful run from that right-hand side, right across, Saka just receives it, as it's just falling away towards that byline, tries to dink it. Good recovery run from Brentford. Declan Rice has been dangerous with his set pieces so far. Declan Rice stands and ready to take the corner kick, but there's such jostling for position in the six-yard box that referee Rob Edwards makes him wait. England with a late drop goal win to beat Ireland 23-22 at Twickenham. Marcus Smith winning the game right at the very end. More reaction to that to come on 5 Live. As Rice's delivery towards the front post, towards Kivior, comes back out to Declan Rice, who's strong in the challenge against Wissa, and now he lays it off to Martin Odegaard, shooting position, sends in a cross though, and it goes out for a goal kick, no, last touch off the defender, Gabriel managed to force it off the defender, Jorgensen there, and it's a corner to Arsenal on the right-hand side. Yeah, really well worked, they go short, Odegaard, fantastic so far in this game, just drifts across right into the far post, Gabriel just keeps it alive, managed to ricochet, jumps up, gets the crowd behind him. Yeah, the crowd are back behind Arsenal, the noise is back, having been deflated with that late, late equaliser in stoppages ahead of the break. The second latest first half goal Arsenal have ever conceded in a Premier League match. A sack of place in the corner, whistle blown, too much pushing in there. And the referee had blown his whistle and Saka's going to get the chance to take it again, but not until after Rob Jones has a word with one or two of the players in there. Uh, latest goal that Arsenal have ever conceded in the first half of the game was a Ruben Neves goal for Wolves, 49 minutes and 11 seconds. And 
This goal from Johan Visser today was about 20 seconds earlier than that, but a very, very late goal that is threatening to destabilise Arsenal's day. And who knows, even their title charge if they don't recover. Saka take two from the corner flag, right hand side as Arsenal come forward, far side of the pitch from us, sends it in, in swinging, headed by Roslev at the front post, comes down to Odegaard who tries to hit it, difficult technique, down into the ground, couldn't get any propulsion on it, Saka gets it again to Saliba, Saliba sells it to me, that was clever, now he hooks it across, it deflects and it deflects into the side netting off Yarelt, it's another quarter to Arsenal and they've got their second win and Mikel Arteta's team are back in top in this match. Yeah they are, they're keeping it alive, Brentford can't clear the line, set P Pieces, deliveries are good great little bit of skill from the defenders he just goes to dink it right around that back post and set piece set up and usual just ringing the edge of the area everyone back in that six yard area for Brentford highlights to come tonight on match of the day 10.30 on BBC One here comes Saka's latest corner kick delivery great trajectory on this one Gabriel tried to get up at the front post he's been in the goals lately but there's been a foul on Christopher Iyer and that is going to be a free kick to Brentford inside their own six yard box boos from Arsenal fans around the Emirates but a relief for their defence of the Brentford team there's a goal in the Women's FA Cup Brighton against Manchester United Hamish Marshall it's Brighton nil, Manchester United 4 United have scored the best goal of the game a strike from outside the box from Lisa Nelson Sophie Bagley in the Brighton goal who's made two excellent saves in the second half could do nothing about it United cruising to the semis Brighton nil, Manchester United 4 thanks very much here at the Emirates 1-1 between Arsenal and Brentford on a day that Mikel Arteta knows his team can go top of the Premier League tonight if they win but only if they win and the longer this game stays level, that jeopardy is going to increase and the tension and the nerves are going to build as Trossard wins a good flick on header, looking for Kai Havertz. Cleared away by air, and then a shot by Tony from a million miles out, and he nearly beats Ramsdale! What a shot from Ivan Tony! Ramsdale just got his glove to it, backpedalling, and the Arsenal defenders run in to congratulate Ramsdale. They know that he needs a boost for his confidence after that mistake. That was a brilliant effort, though, from Ivan Tony. What a goal that would have been! This is an unbelievable strike from miles out on the left-hand side. He has no right to even go for it. Slices it left foot. It looks like Ramsdale's done. He backs pedals and just puts that right arm out and deflects it wide. Top save. That will do Ramsdale's confidence the world of good. If you missed our coverage earlier, it was a Ramsdale mistake that gifted Brentford's goal to them here. 1-1, the corner, in swing and claimed by Ramsdale. And he's back on top now. He's been nudged into by one of the Brentford players, the big defender Collins. No free kick, though. Referee says play on as Ramsdale got back to his feet. It's a lively game now at the Emirates. That was a scare. The brazen attempt by Tony to score has really riled the Arsenal fans. Here's Saka down the other end, into the penalty area, through the legs of the goalkeeper, but across the face of goal. And it's still active for Kivior. He's crossed from the left, too close to Flecken, who makes the save. 56 minutes played, Arsenal 1, Brentford 1 for now. Brilliant, what a second half we've got now. It's opening up. Saka, fantastic as he goes towards that byline. He leaves defenders and just pushes it across. Nobody there to direct it. We're just going back to that effort for Ivan Tony. He is miles out. It looks like it's just going to drift in. It would be right up there, one of the best goals of the season, I'm sure. But he recovers well, Ramsdale, under that pressure. And that's what he needed to do. That would be the confidence. But Brentford are coming. Well, this game will be watched and listened to with intrigue on the blue side of Manchester and the red side of Liverpool are Arsenal going to drop points here Trossard to the edge of the area back to Declan Rice who gave Arsenal the lead in the first half Kivior has come to join the attack on the left hand side he'll give it in field to Gabriel Brentford playing so deep and that's allowing Arsenal to get right up and even the deepest lying Arsenal player is within 15 yards of the Brentford penalty area Gabriel gives it short to Jorginho now on to Declan Rice again Rice into the penalty area Havertz to Kivior low ball in to flex out for a corner that could so easily have been an own goal Nathan Collins got away with one there yeah he did get away with one he tried to clear it so it was off his shin brilliant little overload Declan Rice into Havertz Kivior just coming forward fizzes it across the face off the shin just wide Collins oh tries to 
clear at the instep, very lucky. I was in Prague on Thursday for five live and Liverpool's Conor Bradley scored an own goal in a position just like that, slamming it in beyond his own goalkeeper. Brentford get away with that one, 1-1, one, one. Declan Rice's corner, towards the back post, Fleckin jumps, touches it away and out it trickles for another corner. Yeah, there's a little bit of a collision, They're asking for more, Declan Rice, good delivery as Fleckin gets it, but... There's uncertainty, these deliveries are good, both teams are putting it in areas of danger, testing defences out and it's all about the quality referee. Rob Jones is just trying to settle it down, trying to stop all that pushing and pulling. Arsenal have not just won games recently, they have dominated opponents, they have put up some huge score lines. This is the first big test it would feel that Mikel Arteta has faced in some time in the Premier League at least Saka ready to take the corner on the far side here he comes plays it in another end swinger Gabriel's headed it down saved on the line Gabriel did well to rise and power it downwards and then I think it even deflects off someone else before reaching the arms of the goalkeeper but Mark Flecken holds it like a baby and just cuddles the ball on the ground so relieved that it popped into his chest yeah Janel just behind Flecken towards that line Gabriel rises so well sort of the left leg just keeps it out and just falls into the goalkeeper's arms here come Arsenal once more it's electric at the moment to the Emirates Odegaard to the byline and touched by the goalkeeper out for another Arsenal corner and Odegaard sprints to provide the ball to Saka there's a long way to go here but the way Arsenal are playing it's like there's no time to waste 1-1 Arsenal beat Sheffield United 6-0 in the last game 4-1 against Newcastle before that 5-0 against Burnley 6-0 against West Ham but they're struggling here Saka plays it in goalkeeper has stayed on his line Rice shoots low into the shins of a defender and Brentford relieved to get the ball away yeah Declan Rice just comes across you thinking he's just going to strike Ramsdale under pressure he goes long it's no mistakes on this occasion well, he's a foul in the area Kivior in the penalty area goes down Ivan Tony was the defender near him on field decision is play on no penalty as players of both teams swarm around the referee VA over look at it in the background Paul Tierney is the video assistant referee he's assisted by Steve Meredith looking on from Stockley Park on field decision no penalty but this delay in play will allow those officials to peruse the replays and see if there's any case I think even if there is a foul there the contact begins outside the penalty area and therefore VA or wouldn't be allowed to get involved anyway yeah, it's not much in that there is a run into an advanced position just outside the penalty area I would say nothing there, but on the second one, Onyeki buys the foul. That'll be the one, really, that's the most frustration. So, no penalty. VAR as well today. Teeny under a little bit of pressure as well. It won really many decisions this weekend, I'm sure. An hour played in North London, 1-1. Liverpool host Manchester City tomorrow at 3.45 kickoff. You can listen to the game in full here on Five Live. And will the prize on offer to Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola be even greater? If Arsenal were to drop points here, it's a chance for one of those two to build an even bigger lead at the top of the Premier League. But that is only if Arsenal don't grab a winner here. And they've over a half an hour left to try and do it. Yenel does the ball for Brentford. Left footed delivery is good. Saliba gets up. Edge of the six-yard box and clears it away. Good control by Havertz. Now, can they spring a counter-attack, Arsenal? Kivior up to Declan Rice over the halfway line. yanel has got back well to challenge him. And Brentford regained possession. And Brentford, after a very slow start, themselves you can see the visitors realize the jeopardy for their opponents here and they're making life as uncomfortable for Arsenal as they can here come Mikel Arteta's team again Jorginho midway into the Brentford half Arsenal playing from right to left slips a good ball through to Saka in the penalty area no room for the shot back to Martin Odegaard goes for the top corner punched away by the goalkeeper Trossard this time goes down in the penalty area more appeals for a spot kick on field decision is play on Arsenal will continue VAR looking in the background Jorginho chips it into the box too far in front to Trossard the ball goes out for a goal kick and now that the ball goes dead the complaints echoing in the ear of referee Rob Jones once again he emphatically points for a goal kick yeah there is an arm round the shoulder they will have a look at it whether there's enough sort of contact whether there's enough of a pull Rosalev just on that right hand side as the goalkeeper comes to punch but We'll soon see. The screens go purple. The cheer from Arsenal fans. 
who are suddenly big supporters of the whole innovation of VAR right now and they think could it be no the flag says no no foul by Rorslev I think it's, it's, it's one of those grey areas Michael if he holds on for any length of time but his arm is around the neck and then he lets go and the letting go I think is key in, in the official's decision making what do you think he lets go but could he have stayed up I think that's the point is it right in front of the goalkeeper it's natural that bit of contact goalkeeper's coming to head it make sure you go down give them something to think about but I don't think they were going to get that one wrong in Stockley Park Arsenal 1 Brentford 1 supporters of Liverpool and Manchester City will be glued to this Arsenal who've had an impeccable record in the Premier League since the start of the calendar year they're looking for an 8th straight league win in a row they're being held here as uh, the cross from Tony is too close to Ramsdale and Ramsdale gathers it immediately bowls it out low to Jorginho Brentford who are brave there they committed bodies forward the problem with that is it leaves gaps at the other end which Saka is looking to exploit bearing down on the penalty area Saka shoots blocked by Matthias Jensen Saka's able to sprint out and recover the loose ball gives a pass to Jorginho more centrally Jorginho back out to the right hand side to Ben White Arsenal have been a flurry of passes in this game really Brentford's defenders will be dizzy this is Jorginho just outside the box to Odegaard who's been at the heart of everything now Ben White level with the edge of the penalty area right hand side as Arsenal come forward gives it to Saka things slow things get a bit more hushed around the Emirates the intrigue continues to grow as Saka gets it once again Still out on the right-hand side. Back to Odegaard. They're overloading with White. Oh, he's unlucky there. He tried to roll it through to Kai Havertz. And it's cleared away. Oh, but it didn't go out for a throw. Saka was able to keep it in play. Arsenal come again. Jorginho into the feet of Ben White. Back out to Saka. Dancing over the ball. Trying to shrug off Matthias Jensen. Finds a bit of room for Saliba here. Seven or eight yards outside the penalty area. Still all on the right-hand side of the field as Arsenal come forward. Odegaard picks a pass to Havertz. He goes down looking for a penalty. And he went down in installments. And, and Brentford, a few furious here and they think the German who's already on a yellow card they think he should be sent off for that as the ball eventually goes out of play and these complaints are going to be solid because Havertz is on a yellow and he has blatantly dived in the penalty area there well he's asking you know for help VAR saying what have you got and at that oh what a big decision he's got to make Havertz goes into the area does he touch it? No contact. It is a dive. He's dived. He's in big trouble. Why, why does he not make that decision now? Can Re he interfere with that? Referee Rob Jones is waiting for the VAR assessment. And, of course, the trouble is, yes, the VAR, because... This, well, now this is where there's, there's flaws in the system because VAR can't get involved unless they think it's straight red they can't so for a second yellow even if the video assistant referee Paul Tierney says that's definitely a dive it should be a yellow he's not allowed to convey that information to the referee and that is one of the loopholes of the system wow Kai Havertz is a lucky lucky boy 1-1 at the Emirates in North London Arsenal lucky to still have 11 on the field Havertz who was booked for a foul in the first half it was the foul that actually led to Norgard having to leave the field this is Trussard wide on the left hand side for Arsenal 12 yards outside the penalty area Tra plays a cross field ball well flicked on by Ben White to Martin Odegaard he's got to try and weave his way around Tony Gabriel gets involved now Kivior on the left hand side it's a cross on an attempt on target but tame no power on it and even though Flecken was slow to react he was able to get down and to make the save Arsenal 1 Brentford 1 66 minutes on the clock this is high jeopardy now it's got absolutely everything happening you see Flecken now kicks the ball out they want treatment but Mikel Arteta asking for a bit of help it's all going off. The Brentford bench also asking questions. There's delays, there's drama. All staying down, there's frustration all around. There could have been a red card as well. What's going on in this game? It's all happening here. When they kicked the ball out, Mikel Arteta played ball boy and he wanted to quickly get the ball back so Arsenal could take the throw. But the referee had already brought play to a halt. Havertz again involved, cannoning into Matthias Jorgensen. And given 
that he's had one yellow, he should have had another yellow. Havertz would probably do well to stay in his lane and keep his head down for a little bit now. Midway through the second half, still 1-1. I'm going to go back to that talking point. I watched the referee's approach, and when he ran to the angle, he thinks that's a dive. Because he would have straight away, he'd put up and he'd go penalty. He thought it was a d- dive, and something in him make it, made that delay. Wow. That is, did you see his approach? It's something drastically I mean, wrong about that, Connor. The replays confirmed it, but in the time, and we're a long way away, but in real time, we both felt he went down, but he died. he went to give it. He stepped, he approached, went to it, then something made him stop. Wow. And given the location of the of the pitch, Nick Hopton, the assistant, was very close to that. That was his area of the pitch, and he'd have had a good view of it as well. High controversy, particularly if Arsenal to go and win this. Brentford will feel hard done by. Anyway, the play is back underway. 68 minutes on the clock. Declan Rice, who set Arsenal on the way with a goal in the first half, comes on the attack, gives it to Leandro Trossard. Back to Kivior. Too much elevation on the delivery. Sails over the head of Saka, who turns and sprints out by the corner flag to try and keep it in play. Keen Lewis Potter goes with him and touches it out for an Arsenal throw. Near the corner flag, they attack down the right-hand side. Arsenal, who know if they win this game, they go top of the Premier League, but at the moment, they're not winning it. Ball in low towards Declan Rice, who can't control it bounced off his shin pad Ivan Tony tries to come away and then Rice commits a foul in fact there was two fouls in quick succession there the referee was waiting to see if there would be any advantage on the first and there wasn't so it comes back for a Brentford free kick on the edge of their own penalty area and Arsenal are going to make a change here Gabriel Jesus is about to come on and he will take the place of Jorginho. I wondered if they'd hooked Havertz, given how close he's been to a red card. But it's a very attacking change. They take off a midfielder to bring on a striker. Havertz will drop into the middle three. Yeah, Havertz just drops down one. Gabriel Jesus leads the line, but I can't get away from these decisions. Referee being put under a lot of pressure. Paul Tini last weekend, he's not been able to get a game. He's the VAR. He's having a look at it. He got blamed for everything last week. It's the team, the officials, who was helping him out and who was out for Rob Jones. It's poor again from the officials. It's not just the one in the middle, it's the whole, it's the whole team of them getting decisions wrong that affecting title races. Throw into Brentford, 1-1. This will be a major talking point if Arsenal drop points and fail to go to the top of the table. Ten Premier League matches to go this season after this one. The title race reaching its climax closest title race we've had in a decade Yanelt for Brentford gives it back to Collins, floats into the penalty area, here's a chance gone and a touch of the header over the top by Ramsdale to deny Nathan Collins, that's a good save, he made a mistake earlier on for the Brentford goal, but that was a good save from Aaron Ramsdale who's had to make a couple of them now yeah it was a brilliant save seeing Collins ghost in just tries to just loft it over the top of Ramsdale I think he's got to direct it further into the far corner recovers steps back tips it over the bar Brentford are getting chances they're growing in stature growing in belief and now another set piece to deal with five live from the BBC and BBC sounds this Saturday tea time in North London Arsenal 1 Brentford 1 in the Premier League Liverpool hosting Manchester City tomorrow at 3.45 kickoff. you can listen to on 5 Live the Brentford corner comes in from Jensen Lewis Potter will control over on the far side he takes on William Saliba Saliba slips Lewis Potter unable to get past him though and the ball trickles out of play last touch off Saliba and that will be a throw into Brentford and they remain in the attack for now but there is wide open space for Arsenal to counter attack into if they can win the ball back here 1-1 one, one for now yes great from Brentford they're going to line up that long throw but they're really high you think they'd have someone back stopping that counter but William Saliba there 1v1 he looks so comfortable doesn't he this is quite gung-ho from Brentford the boos and cheers because it's taking so long for the throw in Jensen comes long run up powers it in Collins tries to get the flick on Rice beats him in the air it comes down to Ayer he'll float it in Tony can't get off the ground and Ramsdale makes the save and then he's rugby tackled by Wisser there's no need for that from Johan Wisser and he gets a yellow card Brentford's goal scorer who charged down Ramsdale to score in stoppage time ahead of the break has wrapped his arm around the goalkeeper there and given away a completely unnecessary free kick and picks up a completely unnecessary yellow card. Wow, referee. He's got so much to deal with. 
understand why Johan Rissa just delays Ramsdale he's stepping forward trying to set off the counter front four now pushing right forward Brentford saying we'll go man for man fascinating now as Arsenal go for it they've just got to be careful that they don't lose the game you expect them to create lots of chances but what a game we've got Johan Wisser, who's now scored in three Premier League games in a row. It's the first time he's done that in his career. Scored against West Ham, scored against Chelsea. Here today, he scored against Arsenal. As Odegaard puts it up for the Gabriel Jesus. Involved for the first time. Ayer comes out, slides in on the Brazilian. Holds him up, but Gabriel Jesus does get the ball. Now he wants a corner, and he'll get that too. Ayer three times there had to stop Gabriel Jesus corner to Arsenal Saka already in position to take it time beginning to run out now just over a quarter of an hour of normal time to play yeah are oh, you getting in positions he's creating putting crosses in 1v1 you've got to be careful Gabriel Jesus is wonderful at that Arsenal's winner against Brentford in November came in the 89th minute for Kai Havertz could there be late drama again? In swinger from Saka. Repel to the edge of the box to Martin Odegaard. He tees up Declan Rice. Who hits the crossbar? The very corner of post and crossbar rattles at the Emirates. Declan Rice, who for the first time in his career has scored in two Premier League games in a row. And he nearly made it three goals in two games there. What a shot. It bent like Roberto Carlos towards that top corner. And it cannons off the very angle of bar and post he's only through the Roberto Carlos but it was the instep we see him do it with the outside of his foot curls right around into that top corner and it's literally hit right on the the, the post and bar where it meets that would have been some finish Arteta smile laugh to realise how good that was these are the tiny narrow margins that can matter so much not just on any Premier League Saturday but in a title race and Arsenal millimetres away from restoring their lead a lead desperately needed to keep up the pressure in the title race against Liverpool and Manchester City who play each other tomorrow and correspondent John Murray will bring you commentary of that game from Anfield a unusual kick-off time 3.45 unmissable though a game that a global audience will be tuning into on Merseyside tomorrow Will Arsenal be ahead of them at kickoff? Only if they get a winning goal here. Havertz comes on the attack down the right-hand side. Brentford wearing their chain strip. The turquoise and the navy getting bodies back. Saka goes to ground. whistle has got to be careful on the yellow card. It's a free kick to Arsenal. It's not a shooting position, but it's a dangerous platform. Wide out on the right-hand side. Eight to nine yards outside the penalty area. Michael Brown. Yeah, he's right. Wister just tries to connect to get the ball off Saka, but he just catches him on the side of the leg. His knee just buckles as he just touches the front of the ball and referee good decision on this occasion Saka's feeling that his medial might have tweaked it might be in a little bit of bother when we've seen it back but now set pieces Arsenal have been excellent at them how brave can you be Brentford all set up around the penalty spot referee wanting no pushing no shoving delivery is going to be key teams that win titles find ways to win a game like this in this circumstance Odegaard puts in the free kick Fleck and Brave jumps even though Saliba barreled into him and the goalkeeper was able to punch it away but not very far Saka has it for Arsenal corner angle of the area right hand side gives it back to Declan Rice back out to Saka again Saka has been on a long run of scoring and assisting in every game that he's been involved in one or the other since the turn of the year as now Odegaard puts it in front of Saka again attempted right foot across is blocked away by Collins and out for a corner corner to Arsenal they've had so many of these in the second half yeah they're dominating it now actually pushing Brentford back defending's excellent goalkeeper now he's saying he's winded there's a delay there will they bring on the medical staff we'll soon see but Saka wants to get playing quickly they've got to defend another one first contact Aya we've seen and Collins getting that first contact away from the penalty area Thomas Frank waiting to make a double change he won't make it while his team are defending this corner Bukayo Saka standing over at a very congested six yard box they're all in trying to put pressure on Fleck and the goalkeeper here comes Saka nice in swinging delivery met by the head of this at the front post and now a chance to break away for Onyeka but he's stopped by Odegaard Odegaard who's unable to keep the ball in play and out it goes for a throw into Brentford on the far side and Brentford have got a lot of urgency when they've got the ball as well you, you, you sense that 
Thomas Frank believes his team, regardless of you know earning a draw here, he thinks Brentford could go and win this, and he's about to bring on Neil Mope. Mope, who has twice scored late winning goals against Arsenal in his career back in his Brighton days. So Onyeka, who's on a yellow card, is going to come off. Mope will replace him. And the other change is going to see the Ukrainian, Yehor Yarmiluk, come on. And the other player who'll make way is Joanny Vissa. So both players on yellow cards, perhaps sensibly replaced by Thomas Frank ahead as one is sure to be a combustible final 15 minutes here. I think you see those changes, don't you? I think they make sense. Look at Neil Morpé, the experience he's got. He's got that little bit of devilment, that little bit of wind-up, but he can finish, he can get in good positions and... Then in the middle of the pitch, you've seen on Yekis, he's, he's in. Chance, Mope, first time involved. Ramsdill came charging out of the penalty area and slide, tackled it away, long into the Brentford half. Aaron Ramsdale had to be alert there. If you missed our coverage earlier on, Declan Rice gave Arsenal the lead. They were dominating the first half. Then, in the fifth minute of stoppages ahead of half-time, Ramsdale made a huge mistake, failed to clear the ball away. Wissa charged him down and scored. And ever since then, we'd wondered how Aaron Ramsdale would react. The only reason he's playing today is because David Raya is ineligible against his parent club. But he has had to make some very good saves, including a world-class stop to deny what would have been an incredible goal from Ivan Tony from distance. Arsenal now make two changes of their own. Zinchenko comes on and Reese Nelson comes on. Trossard is one of those who makes way and Kivior is the other. So Zinchenko comes on at left back and Reese Nelson joins the attack where Leandro Trossard had been playing. Arsenal won, Brentford won and the huge clock of the clock end of the Emirates ticks on and we've got just over 10 minutes of normal time to play. There's been quite a few stoppages. There could be seven, eight minutes to be added on. There's still a long way to go in this one, but Arsenal need to score if they're to go to the top of the table for the first time since Christmas Day. Teams at the top seem to have a habit of scoring late goals and they seem to find that way. And Arsenal have got to do that now, making changes for all the domination. Arteta just starting to get a little bit edgy now. Trying to rush things through down on that technical area. He's trying to play the game. He's trying to rep everything about it. He's in a little bit of an argument here as well. Arsenal dropped 11 points in seven games in December. It seemed to really derail their title charge. But then into January, it is all clicked into gear for Mikel Arteta. Up until now, could this be set to be a setback for the first time in 2024 for Arsenal? And given the strong dominant form of both Liverpool and Manchester City, can Arsenal afford any setbacks at all? Remember, in midweek, Arsenal must play Porto, hoping to come from behind in the Champions League. And next weekend, Arsenal go to the Etihad to play Manchester City. Lose this one, and there is every likelihood that the coming days could see Arsenal's season fall off the rails. Yeah, they could, but we'll soon see. <laughs> Anything can happen with the fixtures, the way things are lined up at this moment in time but you know, there's a long way to go in this game big changes and it's who can find the way who's got that bit of quality Zinchenko to take a throw in for Arsenal left full back position his first appearance in over a month Alexander Zinchenko been out with a calf injury takes his time over this throw up towards Kai Havertz little push to the back from Christopher Ayer spotted by the referee and that is going to be a free kick to Arsenal and there is a, a Brentford player who is back um, and I did say next weekend for the City Arsenal of course I'm, I'm missing a weekend it's, it's after the international break that, that they go there uh, all over by the way in the Women's FA Cup Brian against Manchester United here's Hamish Marshall Manchester United beaten in the FA Cup final last season are through to the last four first half goals from Millie Turner Nikita Paris and Lucia Garcia the icing on the cake a strike from Lisa Nelson Mary Erps had one save to make in the whole match Brighton nil, Manchester United 4 thanks Hamish shrill whistles cutting through the evening air in North London as Arsenal fans complain Matthias Jorgensen taking an age to get back to his feet Did, didn't want treatment though because then he knew he'd have to leave the field they didn't like that the Arsenal fans play eventually back underway these minutes will all be added on at the end 82 minutes of the big stadium clock 1-1 at the Emirates Stadium Arsenal against Brentford 
Zinchenko up to Reese Nelson. Heavy touch, but he's got the pace to get onto it. That's a good ball in front of Ben White. White pushes it onto Bukayo Saka, attacking now the edge of the penalty area that Brentford defend, but that's good work by Matthias Jensen getting back to put pressure on Saka. Brentford keep it alive. Lewis Potter with a high risk clearance, but it works to Mope. And now it'll be flicked on forward again by Yarmouk, but he gives it away to Gabriel. So Arsenal come again. Reese Nelson. 15 yards inside his opponent's half. Brentford, as soon as they lose the ball, they all retreat to get back goal side once again. Come on, Arsenal, is the call from the Emirates crowd as Havertz gives it to Gabriel Jesus. Back heel to Havertz once again. Edge of the penalty area. White, no room for a shot. Shuffles it on to Bukayo Saka. It's so intricate from Arsenal. White to the byline. Swings in across, which goes over the roof of the net and harmlessly out for a goal kick. And Brentford breathe a sigh of relief. Arsenal won Brentford nil. Michael Brown. Yeah, down that right-hand side, they overload Saka. Ben White getting forward, but Matthias Jensen's helping Lewis Potter out in such a big way. He's doubling up, trying to get over because you know what Saka brings. You know the deliveries, you know those runs. It's a big help from central midfield getting across to help your defence out. Can they keep it up? Can they keep trying to find a way to stop Arsenal but Arsenal will be relentless and just waiting for that 1v1 and maybe a chance here as Reese Nelson comes powering through the middle and Janelt got back well to make the challenge just on the edge of the penalty area Reese Nelson slides to ensure that it can't be cleared away by Collins Arsenal fans loved the commitment of Reese Nelson there then Collins goes to ground after the challenge and Arsenal's fans joy turns to anger and they howl derision towards Nathan Collins there because they feel Brentford are trying to run the clock down here with all these stoppages as the big clock ticks up on 84 minutes now played at the Emirates 1-1 there's a challenge that comes across onto his left leg puts his arm up and says he's got a sore left ankle he's limping he's hobbling back into position Collins but Nelson does really well drives into position great recovery runs as well weren't they Jan Elt especially the amount of ground that he's covered Arsenal have never completed a league double over Brentford this is the eighth season but they've been in the same division as each other. I think one of the GTEC earlier on this campaign with a late goal, remember. Can Arsenal get another late goal to win this, to take the three points and to move ahead of Liverpool and Manchester City and go to the top of the table? Jensen putting pressure on Ramsdale, not allowing him distribute quickly. Ramsdale balls the ball down onto the ground, then he kicks it himself right-footed, not a good clearance. It's not the strong point of his game, Aaron Ramsdale. As... Gabriel wins a header, Gabriel Jesus battles for it and it falls onto the instep of Martin Odegaard. Can he inspire Arsenal to a winning moment in this game? Or a Mikel Arteta side about to drop two points. This is Saliba, midway inside Brentford territory, right hand side of the pitch as Arsenal come forward. Odegaard gets his foot underneath it, spoons it into the penalty area looking for Havertz. Too many defenders back there. Ben White with a clever ball back to Odegaard again. Back to White, tries to cross, Havertz!
becoming full of anguish has now become joy and celebration again. Arteta went into full celebration mode there. About a hundred punches of his fist through the air. Scarves are twirling at the Emirates now as they celebrate another headed goal. So many headers for Arsenal this season. More headed goals than any other team in the Premier League. And Havertz, he had to finish that one. It was close to the target, but he had to put power on it to beat the goalkeeper, and he did. As Brentford launched it into the penalty area, and Aaron Ramsdale makes a good catch, and another guttural roar from the Arsenal fans to celebrate it. Yeah, big moments, big games. You need players to get into key positions. They've stuck at it. Fair play to Brentford in the second half. They've played better than the first, but Arsenal are relentless. Havertz with the nutmeg on Yarmouk inside the centre circle. Zinchenko will play it up to his former City teammate Gabriel Jesus edge of the penalty area four defenders around it support is required and delivered by Kai Havertz I still have the lead now they will look to pass Brentford to death here as they just set off in a whirl of short range passes to put their opponent's head in a spin Brentford who did well to come back from 1-0 down to make it 1-1 but it seems that extremely tall order now for Thomas Frank to try and spoil Arsenal's day again here there's very little time to go 90 seconds plus the stoppages Ramsdale pumps it long Rorslev's header into Jorgensen Brentford stuck inside their own half audiences in Liverpool and Manchester will be crushed to hear the news of that second Arsenal goal Liverpool and City are both going to be behind Mikel Arteta's team at the top of the table if it stays like this. Havertz wins the flick on header towards Gabriel Jesus. Held up by Ayer, fouled by Ayer, free kick to Arsenal. And now, now the home side are the ones who start taking their time over these free kicks. Yeah, they will. Gabriel Jesus is causing problems, finding his feet, getting into positions. And then, as he just rolls, said there was arms around his neck. So he gives that decision now the supporters are absolutely bouncing in their seats all around us you don't often see the stadium like this they know they're onto something good that's a big goal further evidence that Arsenal have further gears to click into if plan A and plan B don't work Mikel Arteta's side have been able to find a plan C as Brentford make a double change here Jorgensen and Janelt go off Saman Godas comes on and Mikel Damsgaard as well some fresh legs for the closing stages we're about to find what's going to be added on for stoppages here at the Emirates a very exciting game Declan Rice with a header giving Arsenal the lead in the first half Ewan Wissa pouncing on Aaron Ramsdale hesitation in stoppages before half time to make it 1-1 and then another header from Kai Havertz who is now up to nine goals for Arsenal this season. What a good signing that's proved to be. Here comes the free kick. Martin Odegaard, left-footed into the penalty area. And then there's a tangle in the box. And they're all screaming here for this, that and the other. And Rob Jones says on-field decision is goal kick. Well, they're getting very, very irate about this. Is there a bit of a pull? Right on that back post and another look. Gabriel's going crazy. Keen Lewis Potter and Gabriel. deafening noise at the Emirates Stadium VAR is looking at it to see if there could be a penalty to Arsenal that would put this game to bed for sure Paul Tierney assisted by Steve Meredith watching the replays Brentford have every reason to feel hard done by there's a strong case to say Kai Havertz should have been sent off in this second half game was 1-1 of the time and now with Arsenal leading 2-1 there's a pull on the back of the shorts going at when you have another look at it, the hand just comes on to the back of the shorts and this keen Lewis Potter just gets hold of shirt and shorts and he might be in trouble. As you always say, it's, it's how long you hold it as well. He holds it for a few steps as Gabriel tries to get away from him. This game has not restarted. Five Live Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. The Premier League live from the Emirates. The closing stages of this 5.30 game. Arsenal, who knew they needed to win, are not going to get a penalty here. Booze ring around the stadium. 2-1 it remains. We are into stoppage time, but in all the chaos here, I think is it seven minutes that have been added on? I believe it's seven. So there's probably two of those played. Ramsdale clears it away, right footed. Up towards Gabriel Jesus. Collins is gripping his shirt there. 
Hollands gets back ahead of Gabriel Jesus and rolls it to the goalkeeper Flecken Arsenal have had so many comfortable wins by high scoring margins lately this has been more attritional this has been one they've had to dig it out but you know there are many ways to win a game to win a title and Arsenal were never going to win everything 5-6-0 they have been doing recently sometimes you have to dig it out for 2-1 and that is what Mikel Arteta side are on course to do here Brentford have possession throw in for the visitors near the halfway line left by Jensen for Vorslev who tried to steal an extra few yards there and Arsenal went down as if he'd committed <laughs> murder you know? I think he's running about 100 <laughs> yards he's about 5 yards down the right hand side relax Arsenal you're winning 2-1 yes, but that's it they can't relax they are absolutely on tenterhooks these Arsenal fans who know victory is close but they're not assured of it yet Zinchenko turns into the penalty area Gabriel squares up to Ivan Tony and they're locking Did he just Andrews. say I'll see you inside there Tony? Did he? Something like he pointed towards the tunnel interesting well Ivan Tony who's been long linked with a move to Arsenal to join these guys as teammates but they square as he tried to get back up Gabriel did lean down on Tony in the ground and then Tony held his leg to stop Gabriel and they squared up to each other and yeah I'll see you inside was definitely the message from Ivan Tony to Gabriel so you can see Brentford don't like this they hoped they were getting a draw they had a sneaking suspicion they might have nicked a win of their own this hurts Brentford who are about to lose the 13th of their last 17 Premier League games if it's safe like this and we could see there what it means to Ivan Tony as he squared up to Gabriel. Will we see late drama in this game? We've seen it at the end of the first half. Brentford are going to throw everybody forward. Can they create an opportunity? Arsenal to go top. Unbelievable at this stage of the season. Arsenal want to make a substitution, delaying it again, trying to be smart. Trying to use every possible tactic because it's getting so tight at the end of this game. Thomas Partey has got to come on in the place of Martin Odegaard. Odegaard who's never won a trophy in his career and hoping that now as Arsenal captain that he can get silverware in this campaign in which Arsenal continue to find a way to win and are on the verge of an eighth straight Premier League victory in 2024. Earlier on, a late drop goal from Marcus Smith saw England beat Ireland at Twickenham in the Six Nations by 23 points to 22. Tomorrow, you can listen to Wales against France on Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website. Tomorrow as well, live at Anfield for the 3.45 kickoff. Liverpool against Manchester City. Two clubs who are destined to begin that game behind Arsenal in the table because of this scoreline here. Arsenal leading Brentford 2-1. We've played five minutes of stoppages. Declan Rice has it inside the centre circle. Gives it to Thomas Partey. His first touch since coming on is a dreadful one. No teammate out of the right wing as he puts it straight what, out. For what's he seeing there win. over the right hand side? Listen, I better be careful. I've done that several times, by the way, when I've gone in the middle of the pitch, pushed it out that right hand side. Is there going to be a last moment? Such a tense, you know, all around the, the, the crowd now, tense faces, tense people all just to the back of us, corner, desperate for that whistle. Thomas Partey came out as a late sub on Monday at Sheffield United. It was his first appearance in over four months. He had a few wobbly touches then. I mean, there were 6-0 up at the time, so it didn't matter. Jeopardy is increased here. Margins are tighter. One bright, uh, Brentford goal could still spoil the day for Arsenal here. Almost six minutes of stoppages have expired. Remember... The goal in the first half, the equaliser for Brentford came deep, deep in stoppage just before half time. Down goes Party. This time he's the one who's fouled. Free kick to Arsenal. They will take their time over this. Nobody's heading towards the exits. Arsenal fans waiting to celebrate what they hope will be a very hard fought three points here. Three points that can propel them to the top of the Premier League table tonight for the first time since Christmas Day. Well, they've deserved it, no doubt about it. There's going to be controversy over the way they've done it Kai Havertz and the referee not making a decision why did he not, he looked to do it and then everything changes Havertz drifts in, they certainly deserved it but Thomas Frank will be asking questions why the officials haven't made the brave decisions that they're there to make on the day, changing the outcome of games possibly but this is special something's building at Arsenal, it's great to see it's great to witness Spent so many years not getting results. 
wondering what would be next that man in our picture that we're just getting a look at Mikel Arteta what a job he's done joyous bedlam but it's not over yet after this game on Sports Extra Emma Raducanu commentary live from Indian Wells on Sports Extra on 5 Live it'll be 6.06 with Robbie and Chris what a day in the Premier League what a title race we have and Arsenal about to leapfrog over City and Liverpool if they hang on to this 2-1 lead Brentford punt but forward Keen Lewis Potter unable to get a touch on the edge of the area anywhere will do for Bukayo Saka as he pumps it down the field and then he raises his hands to the crowd to drum up even more enthusiasm Fleckham the Brentford goalkeeper kicks it forward and the whistle blows but it's not all over Arsenal fans thought that was the full time whistle it's not it's a free kick to Arsenal but surely the final whistle is only moments away we've now played 8 minutes of stoppage time in North North London Arsenal leading 2-1 yeah, just listen we are top of the league that tells you everything that was what they wanted at the start of this game they've had to fight for it they've had to work hard they've had to find something in the tank we mentioned about teams at this stage finding something special late goals in games when it's tight and now referee issuing another yellow card because Nathan College is not happy with his display and he's had mixed and different um parts of the game Rob Jones that he's got right and he's got wrong he has been tested overall but what a moment for the Arsenal supporters all around us and now this title race is on highlights tonight match of the day 10-20 on BBC One Arsenal 2 Brentford 1 Declan Rice and Kai Havertz with the goals for Arsenal Wissam with the goal for Brentford and still we play on Collins hoops it away upfield big chase on now Gabriel backpedaling to the edge of his penalty area timed his jump well Rice gets it down on the deck clears away left footer towards Gabriel Jesus Arsenal back over the halfway line again here comes Rhys Nelson can they seal the deal Arsenal Rhys Nelson to Bukayo Saka great first touch shoots with his right blocked by Christopher Ayer and still Arsenal play on as Saka sets off towards the corner flag to shield the ball to try and hold on to possession and that's it it is all over Arsenal beat Brentford by two goals to one it is a significant day for Mikel Arteta they move to the top of the Premier League they go ahead of Manchester City and Liverpool those two play each other tomorrow at least one of them is going to drop points for now it's City on 62 it's Liverpool on 63 but it's Arsenal on 64 leading the way with 10 games of the league season to go Michael Brown yeah amazing scenes here Mikel Arteta just running onto the pitch high five all his players the flags are out the fans are all jumping around we are top of the league and it was a strong performance sensational first half as lots of bodies just go over to Ramsdale and tell him how well he's done yes he made the mistake but didn't he recover with two wonderful saves to keep Arsenal into this tie but the big talking points as Arteta just punches the air the main talking point is going to be the referee he looked at it he should have made the decision Connor questions will be asked whether he bottled it why did he change his mind and he did for some reason they had another look at it didn't get the outcome right but they deserved it the title's on and it was a, it was a good performance overall well it is a talking point for Robbie and for Chris as uh, 606 is on the way on five lives should Kai Havertz have been shown a yellow card would that have had a serious impact for the man who went on to score the winning goal in this game Brentford who've now lost 13 of their last 17 Premier League games but this is Arsenal's day it's an 8th Premier League win in a row a 100% record in 2024 this is now Arsenal's longest winning streak in the league since Arsene Wenger's departure 6.06 to come you can call 08085 909 693 to speak to Robbie and Chris but before that on 5 Live it's the news with Carl Hartley and here on Five Sports Extra, welcome to Indian Wells from me, Russell Fuller. I'm alongside Courtney and Wynne, staff writer with the WTA, and we are here for Emma Raducanu's second round match at the BMP Paribas Open. She's up against Diana Yastremska of Ukraine, who's the world number 31. And there has been something of a dramatic start because Raducanu has been going nicely about her business. 
Diana Yastrzemska has been hugely erratic, winning just six points in the opening four games. Raducanu leading by four games to love. And after Yastrzemska won, in fact, her seventh point by going 15 love up on serve, she went to the back of the court and stopped and was putting pressure on her lower abdomen area and at the moment is having a medical timeout and we're not 100% sure she is going to be able to continue so Courtney what have you made of what you've seen so far well, I mean, incredibly impressed by the way that Emma Raducanu has, has worked her way through the first four games of this match. And it's been an, uh, a highly anticipated one to see kind of where Raducanu's game was against Jastrzemska, who obviously was a surprise semifinalist at the Australian Open just in January, had been playing very, very well, but just a very, very sudden pull up. It's uh, outside of her, you know, erratic start, like you said, Russell, to start this match. Jastrzemska didn't look like she had been in much discomfort through the first uh, goings of this match, but now just looks in incredible pain. And, uh, you know, chair umpire Kader Nuni actually had to come down to, to check on her in the back of the court and help escort her to uh, to the changeover chair where, yeah, she's still in a pretty heavy discussion with the physio. So this is one of these situations where sometimes you think a player needs to see the doctor or the physio and they have some sort of medication and they continue, but that is not going to be the case today. And we've lost our effects microphone briefly. That is a retirement. Diana Yastrzemska has retired after just four games and one point against Emma Raducanu here in the second round in Indian Wells. Their only other meeting also ended in retirement, slightly more controversially when Emma Raducanu was two points from victory in uh, Port 